And we're live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Closer Show. So this shit right here is staying right here all year. Yeah. But this shouldn't be stressful at all. That's when I'm just because you wouldn't give a fuck. Jeans, private stock, lead. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Welcome one, welcome all to tonight's Closers Cage Match. My name is Liam Benson. I am going to be the host tonight. For those of you tuning in, we're just going to do a quick rundown of how this format works, and then we're going to hop right into it. In the Closers Cage Match, this is going to be a head-to-head -head style matchup between two of the best closers in real estate, RJ Bates and Nick Luivano. And so what's going to happen is RJ is going to call, and if he gets a voicemail, if he gets an answer, no matter what it is, that's his call, and then it's on to the next. They're going to go back and forth, and then at the very end, you, the audience, get to decide who the winner is. There will be a poll sent out to you guys. Now, it's time for some backstory so you guys understand exactly what stakes are on the line tonight. Nick and RJ went head-to-head -head over a year ago at the 2021, or actually the 2020 Closers Olympics. Now, some people think that one person should have won instead of the other. And the, what I've been told is that the only reason RJ passed on was because Nick, Nick Seller couldn't figure out how to work his email. That's it. If this guy had figured out how email would work, he would have won. RJ would have been out of the competition. So it was a close match. And for those of you guys who don't know, RJ is the current reigning king closer. He swept the 2021 Closers Olympics without even a touch of competition. So tonight is something that they have been waiting for. We've been having to keep him completely separate. We couldn't even have him on the screen at the same time. I mean, it was just intense. It was scary to be a part of, in all honesty. So tonight, we're going to give you guys an absolute show. There's going to be some amazing closings. Get your notepads out. This is some amazing value. But without further ado, we're going to introduce our two competitors, RJ Bates III and Nick Luovano. What's up, guys? What's up, buddy? What's going on, Liam? Not much. Are you guys excited for tonight? Uh, I'm always excited to do this, and uh, I'm especially excited because Nick came on here. Uh, I, I'm excited because I, I felt like Nick and I put on a show at the 2020 Closers Olympics. And so when we came up with this idea for the challenges on Speed to Lead, I wanted Nick to be one of the, the first people to come on here and, and showcase what he does. Um, I, I Listen, I, I think Nick's the only person I've ever been into a competition with before and won and afterwards called and apologized that I won. <laughs> I called Nick and I said, dude, honestly, I, I'm I'm sorry. You, you, there, there, there's The rules of the competition were not fair. He should have moved on. And uh, you're absolutely right. The only reason why he didn't move on is because literally the elderly woman could not figure out how to open her DocuSign and get it signed. So I'm excited to be able to, to do this again with Nick. Nick, what was your rundown of the 2020 Olympics? Uh, first, of all, first of all, it's, it's, it's incredible to be here today. Um, for everybody who's tuning in, be uh, prepared to, number one, learn, um, and number two, be entertained. Um, you're going you're to get to see two uh, entirely different styles, and both of us have hundreds and hundreds of deals closed under our belt. As far as 2020 closures, Olympics, just say that it was a very interesting competition. Uh, RJ and I randomly uh, faced each other in the first round, and you know him and I had a conversation and probably both, and both agreed that if we would have been in different brackets, we would have met in the finals. That's pretty much just how it went. So that's why we had that conversation after. Um, so I'm excited to be here today, um, kind of a long two years later, and we're back ready to rock and roll. So we're excited. Let's go. Well, we're not going to get too much delay on this, guys. We're going to have him calling in just a moment. And for the audience, just so you guys know what leads we are calling, all leads are provided by ispeedtolead.com. The link is down below for you guys to sign up. And um, the, pretty much these are PPC leads, pay-per-click. These are going to be the gold standard when it comes to quality. They're going to beat out any of your outbound methods from direct mail, whether you're doing RVM, mass texting, you're going to be doing your cold calling with all of your VAs. These are going to be so much more quality because these are people who raised their hands and filled out a website saying, you know what, I would really like a cash offer on my property. So that's where the leads are, are going to be coming from. And besides that, I think we're ready just to have them call. Yeah, so real quick here, Nick, just to give you the rundown, 
you get to go first because you're the challenger. So I let you get the pick of the litter here. Whichever whichever lead you want, you go first. And the, a couple of things that we've been doing on these challenges, if you want to double or triple dial, that's fine. You can. Uh, but it's it's whichever one you pick. And then once, whatever happens on that, then we go vice versa. And then at the end, I think Liam has a thing for people to, to decide who's the winner between us. So floor is yours, buddy. I, I always triple dial. I will not always, but uh, I'm, 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 you can call, say it's safe that I'm a triple dialer for sure. All right. So you know we're triple dialing. So right, uh, let's get rock and roll here, and uh, let's get this show on the road because Sally is ready to get called here. Give me one second. 50. Let's I don't know if you can hear me okay. Sound great. Come on, Sally. Could be a house phone. Uh, we're gonna go one more time. I know. I know. Sally had ha had have had to have heard the phone. It sounded like a house phone. There was no voicemail. It just kept ringing. Yeah. So let's see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna try one last time, uh, just because, and then we're gonna we're gonna pass it along. Love it. If you've ever triple dialed before, get ready because they oftentimes do pick up on that third dial, and they're uh, probably pretty pretty pissed. They'll be snappy for sure. Okay, no answer. RJ's up. All right. Hey, Chet, this is RJ Bates calling about your property there on Knox Road. If you could. All right. Go ahead. Oh, you're doing the uh, leaving half of a voicemail there. Uh, yeah. Correct. And here we go. Calling some Calif Mid Central California leads. That's like your market, isn't it? Yeah, I mean we're we're all throughout, all the way right. from San Diego to Sacramento. We're calling a uh, Bakersfield, California, right now. Nice, Sheila. All right, we're going to try one more time here. Hi, 
I know I know they want to answer. It's two o'clock on a hot Thursday night. Hot Thursday afternoon. Man, we got some good locations on these leads. Yeah, they're they're pretty widespread. I'm mean, looking at. Okay, I'm gonna go one last time. We're on the third dial of the same exact seller. So Edwin, if the seller calls back, you guess it's allowed. You can't interrupt the other person. Yeah, if they do call back because we're blowing them up, do we just take those calls if the other person is on? Yeah, take it, mute yourself while I'm on the phone, and then as soon as I hang up, then you're going. That's what I had to do with Aaron. Please leave your message for six six one three seven six three one zero three. Hey, good afternoon, Sally. My name is Nick. I was reaching back out to you uh, about one of your properties here in Bakersfield. You had inquired uh, about possibly looking to sell the property. Phone number is six two six three seven nine. Six four. Give me a call back. I have an offer ready to go. Love to talk to you. Have a great day. Bye bye. Okay, three calls, no answer. Okay, man, this list is uh changing over. <laughs> we see, see. Where, where did my yeah. guy go? Yeah, we got. But hey, for everybody who's watching, you we have a wide variety. You know, uh, I just called California. Before that, it was uh somewhere in Oklahoma. We got, I mean, I see everything. Okay, let's try this again. All right, bud. Okay, we're gonna move, we're gonna move it on to Texas. Um, let's see if we can. Uh, I'm trying to take it straight from RJ's pocket, man. Yeah, we're gonna move it on to uh, good old Houston, Texas. I mean, Texas is like the size of uh, uh, Europe, though. So Houston is <laughs> like five hours away from me. Yeah. So we're gonna. I'm thinking. I just we just want to get a pickup. So let's see if we can get this. Uh, Thing going eight three two. Robin, I love you. Every single time you come in here, you're hyping us up. True promoter, right there. Did you get hired in Miami? Okay, let's see here. Let's roll. I don't see a name on here. One to connect to eight three two five. Christine. Hello. Hey, good afternoon, Christine. Yes. Hey, hey Christine, this is Nick. How are you? Good, good, good. I was, I was reaching back out to you. I believe you had inquired or had reached out possibly online or talked to our students about the property here on, on Silverado. Does that ring a bell by chance? Yeah. Okay, great, great. I'm, I'm actually one of the owners of the company here and I'm assistant at your name number here on my desk. We obviously specialize in purchasing property all throughout the area. So I just wanted to call and just kind of see what your plans were, what you were looking to do. Get ready to go into foreclosure. Okay. Um, okay. Maybe pay off. Oh. We can to get caught up or moving to another house. Okay. Okay. Makes um, total sense. Did now is just just really quickly. 
Um, and I'm actually glad that we're connected because I, I specialize in situations just like this, um, meaning we're able to, number one, accommodate you, um, number two, pay off what existing mortgage you have, and then number three, we're able to, to, to make sure that you walk away profitable. I think that's the number one, you know, you know, formula to the equation. Do you do you know, Christine, is the is the property, is it in pretty good shape or do you think it might be more in there? Yeah, I think it's in pretty good shape, but it does need a little bit of touch up. It's gonna need some touch up. Okay, so we're talking more on like cosmetics, maybe some carpet paint, um, things like that. Okay. On the water heater, but the roof needs to be touched up. Okay. Because that makes sense, and, and I, I know that you've probably been thinking about, you know, you know, moving on from this whole situation and things like. That. Did you guys have? Um, were you guys already looking for like a place to go? Or were you guys already kind of having a city or, or something in mind? Or maybe tell me a little bit about that. We do have a city in mind. And I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of getting hold of my niece. Okay. That she's a realtor where we want to go. Nice. Okay, great. So you're. And I, I, I want to, I want to expand her horizons and, you know, not just make it home to where she's at, but across the U.S. base. Absolutely. That sounds, that sounds incredible. And it's great to have somebody. Um, a family member, that, a family member that's already in the business, to be able to navigate it, make it even uh, as smooth as humanly possible. So I'll, I'll just kind of share with you really quick, um, Christine, how I work. Um, you know, again, like I said, I purchased property in pretty much as is condition. So meaning, you know, no fixing, repairing, maintenance, commissions. I pay all the fees that are involved. Um, you know, I, I don't. You know, I also help with move. It's whatever. It, I, I try and accommodate you as best as humanly possible. I guess my only last question before I'm able to kind of figure out a price is, did you possibly have something in mind of what you're looking to get out of the property? A, a range or a ballpark or something in mind? It's gonna be between 300 and 400,000. 300 and, four, and 400,000. Okay, um, because I, I what, what I normally do uh, prior to even giving you a call is I do some pretty extensive research um, and I look at what I can pay for properties. I normally have assistants in the area that do drive-bys. Um, so we're able to do some research prior to giving you a call so that we have something ready to go. Um, I guess my, my biggest thing is number one is we're definitely in the same ballpark as far as what I probably would be able to pay for something like this. Um, I, I guess if I were somewhere in the lower 300s, meaning somewhere between maybe 300 and 325, would something like that possibly work for you? Well, we had somebody offer us 420. 420? Four, four, yeah. Is that what it was? Okay. And if you don't mind me asking, why didn't you take that offer? That's a pretty decent offer, I would say. Yeah. The, the reason why is because my husband uh -huh. doesn't want to let go of the property. Okay. Okay. So he's, he's I guess, in, in essence, yeah. so he still wants to stay inside of the property. He wants, he wants it. Okay. But the upkeep, the upkeep on the swimming pool mm -hmm. is hard. I would imagine. Um, the upstairs is fine, but our kids have moved out. Okay. Yes, I mean it's a it's a pretty uh, obviously a pretty decent. I mean, pretty rather large uh, house, if you wouldn't mind me saying. And obviously, with the upkeep in the pool. I guess what are you, I mean, and both of you and your title are all, both of you and your husband are on title. Is that correct? Okay, so obviously you have to be a joint decision. Uh, you know, because I'll, I'll, I'll kind of lay it all out, Christine, and I definitely want to kind of get to the point and don't want to waste your time. For us, we'd love to put something together. You know, we purchased an as-is condition, no fixing, repairing, maintenance, commissions. Uh, we're able to make sure that you do walk away. And, and, and there's, there's not much cosmetic surgery mm -hmm. on the house. Uh-huh. I mean, like I said, everything has been good working standards. It's 
a beautiful home for somebody who's young and Absolutely. No, absolutely. I guess my biggest thing is, is kind of getting on the same page as your, is your husband possibly there right now? He's here, but he's working. He works from home. He's, oh. he's with at and Okay. Oh, great. 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 Um, I guess the, I guess to kind of make a long story short here, Christine, I'd obviously love to put it together. And I know that it would take both you and your husband to obviously be on the same page as far as not just a price, but moving forward. Um, I know that I'm able to accommodate, I'm able to pay off any existing mortgage, I'm able to purchase it in as is condition, but I definitely want to make sure that you and your husband are on the same page as far as moving forward. I think as far as the price, we're definitely going to be able to make something work, but I want to make sure that you guys are on the same page as far as moving forward. Do you think that it's likely that you guys would agree upon moving forward and selling the property? Yeah. Okay, so you think there's a pretty... Okay. You think there's a pretty good shot, a pretty good chance? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and last but not least, as far as that that 420 number, who who uh, I have to ask, who made you an offer of 420? Was it another investor? Was it a friend? Was it a relative? Was it somebody that passed by? Because that's a pretty decent offer. Oh, I have to look. I wrote it down. Hold on one second. She's on mute. Uh, I mean, I got the I got the ARV on this thing in like the high 300. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it go, uh, just to move, just to move things along. But again, nothing we can really do. Uh, Darrell, Darrell. So he was probably another investor. He was probably another investor that called you. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you what, Christine. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'd love for you to chat with your husband to number one, make sure that you're on the same page about and and about moving forward. And then number two, um, you know, if I, I know, I'm not sure if you if you're committed on that 420 price, I'll tell you right now, I cannot be at the 420 number. I'd probably be somewhere in the lower 300s. I know that's a big difference, but I want you to definitely talk it over with your husband to make sure that you're on the same page about moving forward. I can give you a call back, um, you know, and uh, and and you know, give you my last and final offer if it makes sense. Love to move forward, and then if not, um, you know, no worries at all. How's that sound? No, I, I think Jarrell is doing pretty good. Uh, 427. 427. That will help us to, yeah. 427. Yeah, no, that is a really good offer. You know, I think that if you and your husband do decide to move forward, I would definitely give him a call. And if by chance, you know, he's unable to meet you at that price of, that he promised you at the 427, you have my, my, my personal number on your cell phone now. And I'd love to, you know, you know, hopefully yeah. put something together. And if not, no worries at all, Christine. How's that sound? Okay. Okay. So you, have, you have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you very soon. God bless. You as well. Bye. Okay. But smart of you to cut that one go. Uh, I, I just she just wants too much. Four two seven plus the husband's not on board. There's not much that's going to get accomplished today. Yep. Uh, with her, it's going to be a follow up, making sure that number one, the husband needs to say yes, we're ready to move forward, and then number two, we got that after the husband checks off yes, right? I call her back. Here's your husband on board. Then I can come in with my offer. She probably wouldn't like my offer anyway. So it's just kind of like one of those things where, huh, can't do too much. You had me scared there the first couple of minutes. I was like, oh, damn, the first person answers the phone, he's going to lock up. <laughs> but it is what it is. Sometimes I say this, all you can do is all you can do. You know what yeah. I mean? On that on that bad boy, I got all the information. Um, just really nothing we can do. It's going to be a follow-up, and then you're going to have to give him the offer. Yep. All right. Ooh, and RJ is already at it. No delay. After you have finished your message, just hang up. Or to hear more options, please press 1. Jose, this is RJ uh, calling you about your property on 16th Street. Uh, it's all you need to sell that. Uh, I'm ready to, to make you an offer. Give me a call back. Thanks. 
Oh, let me call him right back. Can y'all hear that okay? It sounds great. Yeah, it sounds great. Cool. It's first time I'm using a landline. You're using a landline? I am. Because I'm I'm streaming live on TikTok. No, dude. That's so – yeah, I saw you earlier. Although your video was like no, – no, no, it's, it's much better now because I'm using okay. my cell phone. I tried to use a tablet earlier. Oh, yeah. I was yeah gonna it, say. It, it didn't work. But then Pat Hilton was like, no, keep doing it. It's good for the algorithm. <laughs> okay. Even though it looks like shit. All right. <laughs> you were 90 degrees to the left and stretched all the way out. All right, <laughs> all right Nick. Your turn. Okay. Let me see here. We're going to go with uh, – we're going to go with Monica. See, normally, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with the audience here. I'm calling New Mexico right now, and I normally have enough. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not currently in the New Mexico market. I would have a number already ready to go for New Mexico, right? So I'm going to dial from an area. I mean, normally the area code has to match up with the, with the address, but we're going to take a little shot up, take a little risk here and dial it anyway. And we're going to claim and we're going to tell them that we're from California and we're a big company and that we're looking to buy their house. Hello. Hey, good afternoon. Is this Monica? Speaking. Hey, Monica. This is Nick. How are you? Good, good. I was reaching. I was reaching back out to you. I believe you had put uh, something in online, or one of my assistants has re had reached out to you about your property here on Butterfield Boulevard. Does that ring about by yeah. chance? Yeah, I mean, I literally went online on a Facebook ad that popped up. Uh -huh. We buy houses uh -huh. just to kind of get an idea. And um, once I realized I wouldn't get an immediate quote, I backed out. So I oh. never. Well, that's. <laughs> Not no, quite sure. I've gotten like ten different people calling me all of a sudden. Okay, no, yeah, you you did put in your information, and I'm actually one of the yeah, owners. Yeah, I put in my information. I just never submitted it. Oh, you, well, it must. I mean, I'll tell you this. I'm I'm one of the owners of the company here, and my assistant had actually put your name and number here on my desk. So I wanted to reach out to you personally, and I guess just kind of see what was going on. Obviously, you have an interest in possibly selling the property. We buy property yeah. all throughout the area. It's just kind of, I wanted to see kind of what was going on, what you were thinking, and so on and so forth. Well. I literally was just trying to get a general idea. I mean, okay. just to kind of see what I was looking at when we do get ready to sell. Ab absolutely. So, okay. And I know that's that not where I'm at right now. Okay. So, so and I'll tell you this, like, obviously it's probably something you've been thinking about. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if there's, you know, you're looking to relocate or just it's a rental or, or is, I mean, is this one, is it in Monica? I'll tell you, is it in pretty good shape or do you think it might need some work? No, it's terrible. That? That's all the information I had on there was everything needs to be done. Well, and I'll tell you this, I'm glad I called you because that's exactly the type of properties that I buy. I buy okay. properties that number one need an extensive amount of work. Um, I buy them all cash and I cover all the closing costs and all the miscellaneous fees that are involved. And I try and accommodate okay. you, the client, as best as humanly possible. As okay. far as you know, moving forward, did you? Um, I'm, I'm looking at my notes here and I have pretty detailed notes. Did you maybe, Monica? I know you've been thinking about it. Have a price or a range or a ballpark on what you were thinking no, about this one? That's exactly what I was kind of trying to get an idea of what was going on. So I yeah. really had no idea whatsoever what it would be worth i think i mean it's a pretty decent lot mm -hmm. yeah i'm looking at it right now yeah. yeah yeah absolutely and this one was it a rental was it in the family were you living in it or tell it me a little bit about it family. okay yeah, it in the family. okay and how long has it been vacant it's been vacant for a long time i mean um it's been years okay I couldn't even tell you that that's what i thought because normally what i like to do is send one of my assistants prior to calling you to do a little bit of research maybe do a drive-by and just kind of get a feel for the amount of work that it's going to need so that when i give you an offer it makes sense you know what i mean right. um i mean i'll tell you right now and so you didn't think of any number range ballpark something like that saying hey nick if you were to call me and make me this particular offer i would probably say yes and think about moving forward did you have something in mind like that you must have been that number just thrown out there you know, not really. I mean, I, I honestly just have no idea. Okay. That's why I was just basically, you know, not even step one. I was just kind of trying to get an idea so I could get with my family and decide what we're going to do. Uh, and are you the only one on title or is it like a family decision yeah. things like that? No, no. It was my brothers, actually. And uh, so there's three sisters also. Okay. So it's going to be you and then three sisters that are on title. So four of you guys. 
No, it was my brother's, and I'm the only one right now. Okay, so I you're do anything with it. Okay, so you're pretty much the main decision maker on this property yeah. now. Okay, makes sense. I'll tell you this, and I'll I'll kind of get straight to the point. I know you you kind of seem like you're kind of more like the straight to the point type of woman. But I like yeah. that. Um, I purchased them in as is condition. So again, what that means for you is no fixing, no repairing no maintenance, no real estate commissions. Um, I'm going to cover 100% of all the fees that are involved. So what that means is it's not going to cost you a penny. Um, and I'll close it on you know on your time frame. meaning, hey, Nick, if you can close this thing by mid-February, let's move forward. Hey, Nick, if you can close it by the end of February. Hey, Nick, if you can close this thing by the first week of February, we're able to accommodate and make those things happen because we're paying all cash. We're not getting a loan or talking to a bank or so on and so forth. I think for something like this, I'd probably be somewhere in the lower hundreds. Meaning anywhere from about probably somewhere between thirty and fifty ish thousand dollars, something like that. Will something like that work for you? That's probably what I was hoping for, you know, close to fifty or whatever. But I just honestly, like I said, I just really don't even know where to begin. No, no worries. And they begin like with conversations like this, talking to people like me. I've obviously been in the part of this industry for so many years and purchased hundreds of houses, and so I'm very familiar with just how this whole thing works. And my number one. Um, you know, I, I guess, you know, priority just making sure that it's a smooth, effortless transaction. And again, you're happy at the end of it. So right. um, what I'd love to do is what's your best email? It's M W E Y. M W E Y L E R. L E R at yahoo.com. Yeah. Yahoo.com. Um, and then is this the best contact number for you? Yes, yeah, the only one. Okay, you don't have another cell phone or, or, or a home no. phone? Okay, and do no. you live in the area or are you kind of out of the area? It sounds like you might be no, out. No, I mean, I live in the area. It's all in Las Cruces, but I don't live, you know, anywhere near it. But okay. You know, okay. No, get there fairly fast, Yeah. minutes. Yeah, that makes total sense. And so here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm having one of my assistants, as we speak right now, draft up what we like to call a preliminary purchase agreement. And so basically what that means is doesn't mean that when you sign this agreement and it gets right back to me, it doesn't yeah. mean you sold the property. Okay. Yeah. I'm not to that point yet. Like okay. I said, don't even send me anything that needs my signature because I'm not doing anything. Okay. Right no, now. that makes total I sense. I literally was just trying to get a general idea and I, I don't know how, I, I mean, I have had like 10 different people calling me over and over. And have over they given and you and offers? Them. Kind of the same as yours. Um, same ballpark, same range, same things like that. Basically, yeah. And yeah. maybe that was your assistant. I have no idea Pro who anymore. Probably was. I have a pretty big, co big company with lots of employees yeah. that like, make calls just like this. But for me, I wanted to reach out as the owner and just kind of get to know you, figure out the situation. And again, kind of get you something in writing. And even if I send it to you, which I know you might not want me to, but the reason why I do that is because it gives you something physical to look at. Doesn't mean you have okay. to sign it. Doesn't mean you have to open right. it. Doesn't mean you have to do anything with it. But it's saying, hey, Nick sent me a purchase contract. I can print it out. I can read it. It's something that's in hand. And I can make a decision on it when I'm ready. So yeah. if it's okay, I'd love to send you a preliminary agreement. Doesn't mean you did anything, but just right. kind of allows us to kind of take that first step moving forward. I can give you a follow up call here in a couple of days, maybe a week or so, just kind of see where yeah. you are, answer any questions you might have. And then hopefully we can talk about moving forward. How's that sound? Yeah, I mean, at least something with just your contact info. Absolutely. Like I said, I have no idea. I mean, I have gotten so many calls, just one after the other. Like, seriously. Yeah, no. Uh, and <laughs> it kind of makes this look all kind of sketchy because... I yeah, I'll tell you this. You put your name in any web, put your name in any web form on the internet. Um, it's, it's a little crazy like that, but I'm glad that I was able to reach you. I'm glad that we were able to connect. And what I'm going to do is send you over an email with my first name, my last name, my, com my company, um, uh, address, office address, our company website, a preliminary purchase agreement, and then just a little bit, a sentence or two, to, um, you know, expressing what we talked about. And then I'll give you a call here in maybe about a couple of days or a week. This is my personal cell phone, by the way. Do you see the number, the 626 okay. number? Yeah. Okay. So what I want and you to do, is, name? my name is Nick. Okay. Yeah. My name is Nick. I'm again, one of the owners here at the company and, um, you know, we're a nationwide home buying company. And again, we specialize in circumstances just like this and so store my number so you know it's me yeah i will um, yeah because i i mean i'm just like overwhelmed with just no worries yeah no no, no no worries and i and i'm gonna tell my team to and, I, and I'll, what i'll do is i have a like i said a pretty big company lots of employees i'm gonna tell them to leave you alone <laughs> it's probably yeah. my guys bugging you and hounding That's you so awesome. i'm gonna tell them to definitely leave you alone um and that we had a conversation that we're gonna talk in about a couple of days or a week and then we'll just kind of go from there how's that sound 
That sounds fine. Okay, it's great. Something I can definitely take a peek at it. No, absolutely. Like I said, I'm probably not going to sign anything. No worries. No, I don't. I, I wouldn't even expect you to on the first conversation. Yeah. I'd expect us to have a couple conversations like this. Make sure you're 100 percent comfortable. Google us, you know, check yeah. out check out our Yelp reviews. And then when you're comfortable, if it makes sense, we can talk about moving forward. How's that sound? Okay, that sounds perfect. Thank you. Yeah, okay. And, and you for your number and I'll wait for your email. Okay, okay. You have a wonderful and just by and really quick, do you have any big plans over the weekend by chance? Nah. Just yeah. hanging in there? Yeah, COVID's got us kind of. Yeah, it's Not crazy. Lockdown, are, but... Yeah, are you are you a sports fan by chance? Oh yeah. Okay, who's your team? Uh, the Broncos. Oh, Colorado. okay. Anything in Colorado. Okay. I just, you know, I just bought a home in Colorado Springs. I don't know if you've oh, ever wow. been. Yeah. Just purchased, yeah. just purchased a property in Colorado Springs. So I'll be traveling nice. there um, quite often. Are you, are you going to be watching the, uh, the big uh, NFL games this weekend? Oh, of course. Okay. Yeah. If you had to pick a team, who do you, who do you want to see in the Super Bowl? I wanted the Broncos, but I mean, I'm thinking it's probably going to be the Chiefs. Maybe the 49ers. There we go. There we go. We're already best friends. I'm, I'm a huge 49er fan. I'm thinking about flying over there for the game this weekend against oh, the Rams. Nice. Yeah. yeah. My good friend is total 49er fan. So yeah. all I hear is her, well, you know, excited. Well, we're going to be good friends just for just for uh, for you sharing that with me. I appreciate your time and energy and effort here. And I will go ahead and work on this email. I'll give you a holler probably sometime mid and middle next week. Okay? Sounds great. Thank you have you a wonderful then. afternoon. Talk to you soon. God bless. You as well. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Ooh, ooh, RJ, you've got some uh, you got some uh, uphill work to do, man. I just need, I just need someone to answer the damn phone. <laughs> you need someone to answer the phone. <laughs> Again, all you can do is all you can do on these calls. She just was. She said it clearly. I'm not signing today, mm -hmm. but we get her the contract, get her all the company info, just down the road. I had Airbnb at 105 on the offer. I offered her 30 to 50. Well, Nigel says RJ has heard that before and flipped it. Hello. Hey, is Dale there? Yeah, this is Dale. Dale, this is RJ Bates calling you about uh, your property on Hamilton Avenue that you had entered on our website saying you wanted to sell. Are you still looking to get rid of that? Yes, I am. Excellent. How much are you looking to get for it? I'd like to get about 10 grand. That, that's negotiable. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. Is it uh, currently occupied, vacant? What's it? What's going no, on? No, no, no. I was running until a guy and he died back about a month ago. Did he die inside the property? Yeah, he died inside it, but it don't stink or anything. He died in a chair. I got the chair out of there and I cleaned the floor off. So there's not no, like, no putrid smell on it. I got you. How much? How much? Uh, how much were you getting in rent? Oh, I was getting four hundred and fifty a month. Four hundred and fifty a month. Okay. Yeah. And uh, to get a new tenant in there, what kind of work needs to be done to it? Uh, it needs a lot of cosmetic stuff, my friend. Um, it's got it's structurally it's sound. The basement don't leak. It's got a great roof on it. It's got a commercial garage behind it. And it's got some leaks in the roof in the commercial garage, but it's got the chain falls still in there, the I beams. Um, uh, you know, the, the kitchen was remodeled, but somebody got in there. When I was out of Missouri for two weeks. Somebody went in there and stole the cabinets out of the kitchen. But uh, uh, the house is solid. And it's got a uh, fenced in yard. It's got the real nice rotor things for the driveway, you know, the gate, the wheels on it and stuff to open and close. Um, you know, structurally, it's really sound. It needs some cosmetics, man. Okay. And how long did the tenant live there? Oh, uh, he lived there for about a year. Okay. And before that? The, what, the, my, my, my stepdaughter lived there for three years before that. I gotcha. Then before that, her uncle lived there. And before that, I lived there and I've owned the house for, I owned it for like 30 years. I sold it to my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law sold it to my wife. And now it's fine again. <laughs> so you you own it free and clear, right? Yeah, free and clear. No, they ain't been a mortgage on a house since the eighties. Yeah, no, that's free and clear. Would you be open to seller finance? What's that now? Would you be open to uh, seller financing, where you become the bank? Well, I become the bank. You mean take payments? Yeah. 
instead of me writing you a check for for ten thousand dollars cash i pay you out and you get interest on top of it over time um yeah but i, I need some cash man. you need cash I'm trying to save the home i live kitty quarter from the house okay and I, i'm trying to save my house i've had a hard time the last couple my wife died three years ago and uh since my wife died um, you know, I've, I've had a real hot go of it and this COVID thing and everything's been really rough for me. I, you know, and, uh, okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear about your wife. Um, when you say you, you, you know, you're having a hard time, you're trying to save your house or are you possibly in, I need, I need three or four grand just to save my house. Okay? Gotcha. And, 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 and like I said, the 10 grand is negotiable. Well, I, I, I'm looking. I, 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 take some cash and some maybe find out some of it that that would be the best i could do yeah because i mean i'm looking at the values in the area i mean it's i mean there's some properties that have gone for for some higher values but there's quite a bit that have gone for the numbers that you're talking about and yeah. so and, and you're saying your property needs some work and so this is kind of one of those unique situations where the amount of work that needs to be done on the property could almost exceed the, the value of the property when it's all said and done. And so I'm just trying to see what we can do to, to try to make something work well, out well, here. Well, yeah, but, but, but well, we see what needs to be done, but this is one thing I do know. We're in close vicinity of college. There's not that many houses left over here. It's a corner lot, it's an extended lot. It has a commercial garage behind it. Um, the house is, the structure is fine. If the basement don't leak, the foundation is great. The roof is solid. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and, and it's got a fenced in yard and, and these properties, there's no housing in front of it. You know what I mean? At first it comes to work, my taxes paid up on the house. So I can make the house work. If I lose this house, I can move in that house. You know right. what I'm saying? And I, I can do my own work. So I ran my own properties on this block. Matter of fact, most of the houses are left on this block because I, my family owned them and I ran them. Um, so, you, um, uh, but I, I, I need some kind of cash, you know what I mean? I can, I can deal with some of the other. And like I said, he's even flexible, you know, I could take less than the term, but, um, but I, I gotta have some kind of cash. Understood. And then, and, 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 and it's good investment, man. If, if, you know, if, if you got the resources to put into it, I, I promise you that Be, just because of the situation, the way things are changing over here you know what i mean right if i said i could do thirty five hundred dollars would that work yeah that would work okay can i send you over an agreement right now yeah you, you sure can okay give me about uh two minutes here two minutes <laughs> okay I mean, oh, that's what I do. I got, it, I got it right here, man. I'm gonna write it up right now. I mean, that's that's really fucking quick, but yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, I might be lying. I mean, it might take me three and a half. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I'm sixty-five years old, man. This 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 this, this technology and this fucking quickness of shit, man, it just gets me blown away. Hey, man, it's uh. It's changed the way that we can do business nowadays, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's for the better. I just have a hard time encompassing it all. You know what I mean? I, I, agree. I know it's the future and I, I understand it, it it's progress, but I just think you know what I mean? Being my age are just just overwhelming sometimes. And and real quick, I just want to make sure the property is in your name, correct? Well, it's it's in my wife's name. Uh, but she's dead, it's my house. Okay. If there's something got to be done there, you know, but do I, if I have to go to probate, put it in my name, I don't know. You, that, that, that you can tell me. But it's my house. Well, listen, I'm good at what I do. And what I do is buy houses. And so uh -huh. I have title do that. And they tell me, well, they're, we're going to send over this contract. We're going to open up escrow. And they're going to tell us if a probate's needed or because you're married and she passed away, it automatically transferred to you and whatever document needs to be signed. I don't try to get into all that because if I got into all that, I'd become way too smart for my own no, good. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. But I just wanted to let you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a death certificate, a marriage certificate, whatever you need. But I don't know about that part. That's part I don't know about. 
But I owned the house for like 30 years before that, so right. I don't know. But but it doesn't matter. It's not. It's in her name because that's my wife, and she died. And so you know, and I've had the house since, and I paid the taxes and everything. The taxes are up to date. Um, I mean, they might be a little bit behind, but not maybe six months. I don't know. But they're up, they're paid up to date. Uh, as of last year, they were paid up all today. So you know, what I mean, and there's no kind of mortgage ever been on the house. You know, in 40 years, so. Okay. There's no, there's no kind of hidden stuff like that, but that's my wife and that's my house. So, I, but I, I just don't know about the, the name thing. You know what I mean? Well, we'll figure that all out. Like I said, we'll have a uh, title, take a look at it, and uh, they'll tell us what we need to do. Um, okay. Give me a couple more minutes here. That kind of, okay. that kind of slowed me down from uh, from writing it up. So now you're gonna make fun of me and say it, it took a lot longer than. Yeah. But, but I just want to make sure everything's up front. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And, you know, because yeah, I don't want to misrepresent anything. Or anything. Well, yeah, the last thing either one of us wants to do is waste our time getting all the way down to where we think we're going to have a deal and then we don't have a deal, you know? Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's my whole point. That, that's a good thing. So, all right. All right. Well, just keep to the, you got my number and you got, uh, you need my email address or what? I got it, but are you, I'm going to send this over to you while we're on the phone so you can take a look at it and see if you got any questions. Okay. So give me just a couple more minutes. Yeah. You're trying to boot me off the phone. You you about to eat dinner or something? I am eating dinner. Oh, there you go. You're eating dinner and making money at the same time. That's a good dinner right there. Uh, I don't know about making any fucking money, but yeah. <laughs> you I like to fix the house when Dan talks. Right. I understand that. And uh, I just don't have the resources. Right. Because if I could, I would. I've owned a fucking house been in my family for 40 years. I've ran a house. I've owned a house for years and years. Right. And it's a solid fucking old house. The foundation on that so straight is fucking blow your mind. <laughs> I, I ain't lying. It's born as that, that motherfucker to know how to build that. Kid. The two sidewalks in front, they ain't got a crack in them. One says 1912, one says 1914. This house is solid. It's become. All right, so are you at a device where you can get an email right now? Yeah, I'm you can have put it on my phone. I ain't got no tablet on, but yeah, I can get it on my phone. All right, I'm sending you the contract right now. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and sign it on my end. Uh, okay, let me, let, me, let me see what let me get it up here. Uh Come here. Hey, it would only be it would only be fair if he could not figure David, out DocuSign here. right now. That would be the only thing that's fair. <laughs> oh, <I got laughs> Taking bets. All right. Dale, Hold did on. you just give me a just one second here? No worries. You got you got some title issues on this one. This, you're you're talking out, about <laughs> Taxes, my wife. Shit, how do I do this? You see, he's trying to figure it out right now. Hey, man, you, 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 you gotta have some I can't work my phone right. Uh, you gotta uh, call me back in just one minute. Let me look at it on the on the email, then you're gonna have to call me back because I don't know how to get this phone thing off there. Oh, you don't have to get out the phone to, to, to look at it. Okay. You got an iPhone or an Android? Yeah, I got an Android. Oh, yes. Android life, baby. Okay, you know the little button at the bottom? The little the little circle that how you always clear everything out? Okay, let me let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Just push that little button right there. Okay, hold on. I got to put my damn number back in. I didn't even do that. Okay, there's a little button at the bottom. Which one? You know, the one where you always clear everything out. If you want to get out of an oh, app yeah, or something like that. Yeah, just, just click it. that, and then you can go to your email app. There we go. There we go. There we go. Problem solving, baby. He tried to get off the phone. Do this. Yeah. Nigel, you can't make fun of Android users. It's working for me right now. Okay, here we go. I know, I know Nick has an iPhone, doesn't he? Yeah. We the iPhone team. This guy is hilarious. I want to download this thing. Sounds like a knucklehead. 
Right. Oh, oh. No, you just if you just click sign now, it'll take you straight to the contract for you to review it. Okay, hold on, I'm right there. Oh, okay. There it goes. Docu sign. And it says review document in yellow. You just click that. Okay, download the docu sign. What did you say you had on it? Okay, so right after it says titanium documents, I hit that little link there. Yes, sir. Okay. Come on. Um, there. Yeah, Michael, you giving up that easy? You going you gonna sign this thing right now? <laughs> Everybody, I created a poll. Vote if you think that this guy can figure out DocuSign or not. <laughs> you made it. Oh. Okay. Come on, baby. Figure it out. All right. I put my name in. I sent it to you. That sign in. That is, uh, let me see. Let me see if I got it back. Yes, sir. And that, so that's it, right? Oh, and you signed it, and then you got to click finish. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let's see. So you clicked the yellow button where it said review document and then showed you the contract, right? And what's that now? You clicked the yellow button that said review document and it took you oh, to... No, I didn't click that. So hold on. Yeah, yeah. Click the yellow button. Okay. Guys, he sent me an email that said his name and that was it. <laughs> the most amazing thing of all time. He thought replying to the email was him signing the contract. It's actually adorable. Okay. All right. So did you click the yellow button and take you into the contract? Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Okay. Cool. Now I gotta find. Oh, continue. There we go. I gotta put this guy on speakerphone somehow. Okay, let me let me look at this document. <laughs> Michael, you're a savage, bro. Once they say Android, then it's sending the mobile notary. <laughs> Yo, crack me up. It says, this isn't a deal, you cheater. I'm going to stop watching. It's rigged. What? <laughs> I'm buying it for $3,500. How much cheaper? Stay on that one, RJ. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. I guess I could have offered him $35. Yeah. He probably would have took it. <laughs> he was getting four fifty dollars a month in rent. Dang, I'm lying up. Of course, the guy died inside the house. It could have been from the condition. He, died. he said, I cleaned it up. He said, I, he said, he died in the chair and I cleaned it up. Oh. And I took the chair out. Hey, this is hey. going to be a TikTok. <laughs> yeah, he died in there. Why is it doing all this? Now, all you millennials saying, you know, houses are overpriced. You're in the oh, hold on. He signed it. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, you don't have to do anything. It, it just automatically takes you that. You're you're done. It should send you an email that says completed now. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're you're done. We're signed. So, okay. The next steps are we're going to contact you tomorrow morning, and then we'll get somebody out there to come walk the property so we can start our, our process. And then I'll send this off to the title company in the morning so we can make sure we get everything squared away with your wife passing away and, and making sure that it's in the right name and whatever paperwork we need to get squared yeah, away. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. All that's right. Work. Thank you so much. All we'll right. talk to you tomorrow. Yeah. You, you, you got steel there, bro. I'm, I'm telling you. Thank All you, right. sir. Bye-bye. Yeah. Fine. I got a steal. You hear it? He said it. <laughs> Could have been a steal. You know what? Temporary flag on the play here. Cause we've got, Oh, Gojo, OG Gojo, I'm telling you it's not a deal here. Just give us the metrics and tell us why it's a deal, RJ. 
Um, well, first and foremost, it's going to be a cash flow thing. So we'll sell that to someone that either wants to sell or finance it or keep it as a rental. And then when I saw on comp, you could probably push 45,000, somewhere in that range, 40 on the super high end. But I don't think we're going to sell to someone that wants to do that. What I think someone's going to do in there is come in and do bare minimum, rent it out for six, $700 a month, or do bare minimum and then sell it on terms like I was trying to get him to do. Because that's what we would have done. If he would have sold it on terms, we would have done a, a minor fix and then sold it on a wrap. So, yeah. all right, Nick, your turn, buddy. Let's roll. That guy seemed a little high, but let's roll. 30. You got, the, the people from California are telling me $3,500 is too high. <laughs> <laughs> so they, he, he said, I have back taxes, but that's okay. No, no, no. He said the taxes are paid. Or, he said the taxes are as paid as of today. Let's see. Let's see if we can get a pickup real quick. Orville. Hello. Hey, good afternoon. I was calling for Orville. I'm sorry, what? I, I was calling about the property here on, on, on Maple. I might have missed out the wrong number. 501 North Maple Street. Does that ring a bell by chance? Okay, good. I, I did call the right number. My name is Nick. I'm, I'm actually, um, I believe my, you might have put some information in online or one of our assistants had reached out to you um, about you expressing some interest and possibly looking to sell the property. Um, does that ring a bell, something like that, by chance? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, great, great. My name is Nick, like I said. I'm one of the owners of the company, and um, I pretty much wanted to reach out to you uh, specifically to, number one, introduce myself, and number two, I guess just see what your plans were. Hopefully we can you know, maybe put something together. Okay. Yeah, we're, and now, is this property, are you, if you don't mind me asking, you're currently living in the property? Is it a rental? Is it vacant? Or maybe tell me a little bit about no, this. No, we're, we're, we're living in it. Okay, you're living in this one. Okay, um, uh -huh. cool. And and is it in, you know, for me to kind of get get a little bit more information, is it in pretty good shape, would you say, or do you think it might need a little bit of work here and there? No, it's in, it's in good shape. It's in pretty decent shape. Nice. Okay, uh -huh. okay, great. And it sounds like, since you put some information in online, it sounds like you've obviously been thinking about selling. Did, if you were able to put something together as far as like me coming in, paying cash, covering all the fees and closing uh -huh. costs. Did you have, no, that'd be great. Okay. Well, <laughs> I guess we're we're gonna get along quite well because that's that's how I buy property. I cover all the fees, all okay. the closing costs, all the miscellaneous things that are involved. I guess the last question is: Did you maybe talk it over, and did you have a range or a price or a ballpark? Um, if I were able to basically come in and do the whole thing, and you don't pay a dime? Yeah. Hold on a second. Okay. What are we asking for this house? Well. Okay, he's asking seventy for it. Mm, okay, uh, seven zero. That that's what he's that, that that's what you guys are asking for this one. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So, okay, so I'm a, you guys are I guess looking for I guess I'm more like the retail price, right? For like like the like the, I'm assuming I'm assuming the house is all fixed up, ready to rock and roll, bells and whistles, moving ready type situation. Yeah, let me let you talk with him. Hold okay, on. no no worries at all. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. Good, good, good. I'm, I'm sorry to bug you. I was reaching out. I know you guys had some interest in, and you were looking to sell uh, your property here on, on Maple. I buy property all throughout the area. So just kind of want to connect with you and just see what your plans were, what you were looking to do. I believe it might have been your wife who had mentioned that you're looking for, is it 70000 that you're looking for, something like that? Yeah. Oh, wow. I've got a heat pump and a heat pump. It's one of the mini split units. Uh-huh. And I put in a soft water system because the water here eventually gets. Okay. So, yeah, I've got money in it since I've it. Okay. So, I guess to kind of get to the point, and that's incredible that you're able to put work into the property. I normally just buy them as is. Um, I'm looking more or less for some fixer-upper type of deal, but I could possibly do something 
Uh, this one here, I know you guys, I'll tell you right now, they came for 70,000. Uh, my offer probably would not make sense for this particular property. But what I can do is I work with several, uh, you know, big real estate investment firms local to your area that could potentially list your property on the open market and get you that market value of seven. Uh, would that be something you might be interested in? Well, yeah, maybe. Um, just out of curiosity, what, where would yours I, I Man, I, you know, I'd probably, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, it'd be something more like an investment for me. And I'd have to have a little bit of just wiggle room in there um, because I'm going to turn it into obviously a rental and look for a good family to be in there long term. I'd probably be somewhere between, I'd say, you know, thirty five and sixty thousand dollars, something like that. Somewhere in between there. That's probably going to be the range or the ballpark that I can come up with because it's going to be more or less a rental for me. And there has to be a little bit of wiggle room in there for me as an owner, just in case something happens type situation. Yeah, well, I, I, I owe money on it. I see. I got what do you, what do you, if you don't want me asking, what do you owe on it? All right now, probably about 59000 Oh, wow. 59000 Okay. I'll be, I'll, 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 I guess, you know, and I hear you. If I was in your shoes, I'd be, you know, after 70 as well. Unfortunately, I could not be anywhere near 59 or above. But what I can do is I can connect you um, with a very, very reputable investment company, I'm sorry, um, you know, uh, brokerage, I'm sorry, that can go ahead and get in contact with you. They can meet you face to face, belly to belly, shake your hand, do a property evaluation, and they can get you that top dollar that you're looking for, 70 and above, so that you're able to walk away with at least some income in your pocket. How does that sound? Yeah. I don't even care about walking away with money. I just want to be sure that Take me back when I got oh, oh, absolutely. I think you getting 59 um, is very, very possible. I'd love to see you walk away with something. And that's the reason why I'd recommend you to one of my good friends. They can get in contact with you. They can go ahead and sit down with you um, and, and, and basically take you through the process of putting it on the open market so you can get that particular um, you know, price point. How does that sound? Yeah, well, you can have them call me. Sure, hey, sure. Is, it, is this the best contact number for you? It is. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, do you have an email as well? Yeah, I do. Okay. What is your best email? It's red, R E D L I C K, red lick one at juno, J U N O dot com. Juno dot com. Okay. Give me one second. I'm going to go ahead and forward um, this information. And if you want me asking, why did you decide to sell? I want to relocate. Okay, you guys looking to head out of state? Yeah, well, I moved here from Northeast Texas, and I like it better down there. Oh, nice. Okay, and you're looking to obviously, are you going to rent down there or are you going to purchase property down there as well? No, I'll, I'll purchase. I'm not going to rent no more. I just wasted my money. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's for the younger people. I'm too old for that rent stuff. Uh, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. Uh, and did you have any other properties that you might be looking to sell besides this one? No, we just sold one. Okay. Um, let me see. Oh, here. I have one in Tulsa that we sold. Oh, okay. You just sold it, you said? Yeah. Okay. Did you have any others you might want to might be looking to sell? No, that's it for now. That's it. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna go ahead and forward your information over um, to one of my colleagues. They're gonna get in touch with you, meet you, book an appointment. And then, you know, talk about walking through the steps of putting your house on the open market. And, you know, our goal is to get you that top dollar that you seek. And again, um, I know your wife had said that the property is in pretty good shape, right? It's in pretty good shape, move-in ready type situation. Oh, yeah. And I told I understand the thing was built in 1930. Uh-huh. Because it's been in the hands of people for a long time. Okay. Okay, fair yeah, enough. You know, it's been upgraded quite a bit inside. It's been a lot done to it. Okay, sounds fair enough. Then I'll go ahead and forward that information over to you. And it was incredible talking okay. to you guys. You have an incredible afternoon. Um, you're going to love one of my colleagues. Um, she's incredible, works all throughout the area, and you're going to be in great hands, okay? All right, well, I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Okay, you talk to you soon. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. It is what it is. House is worth, I don't know, maybe uh, about 60000 Maybe if it's in good shape, a little bit more than that. Um, so it is 
what it is on that bad boy. All you can do is all you can do. And if you're watching and you work with uh, real estate agents in whatever market you're in, I mean, you can you can easily refer to trusted agents. And then, you know, we, we usually do like a 33% split by referrals to agents as well. So just another, you know, exit to put, put some, some money uh, in your pocket. It is what it is. Love it. Nothing you can do about that one. Hey, Nate, did you call Christine in Houston? Was that the Houston yeah, lady you I, called? Yeah, I called her. That was the first call. There was a no answer. I got you. I think they answered and hung up. That didn't it sound like voice, man, did it? I'll bring them back. Yeah. I thought for sure it was about to say, you know, hey, this is so-and-so, leave a message, and it just kind of went away. Unable to come to the phone at this time, but if you leave a brief detailed message with your name and number, I will return your call as soon as possible. Thank you. Hey, Kimberly, this is RJ calling you about your property on 13th Street. You had uh, said you wanted to sell it on our website, so I was just calling to talk to you about that. Give me a call back. All right, bud. Okay, let's ring them real quick, Virginia. My screen is lagging. Well, four, I'm not three, using a phone, four, three, four, seven, five, five, thirty-three, twenty-one. Hey, Anthony, is this Christine? Hey, good afternoon. Is this Christine? Hello, hello, Christine. Yeah, you got it wrong. Okay, no, I, I was calling about the property on Craig, Craig Mill Road. Does that ring a bell by chance, or do I have the wrong number? 50, 52, 50, okay, great. I, I might have um, possibly misdialed. I believe um, you or somebody had put your information in online. Uh, I'm one of the owners of the company reaching out to you personally. You had put some interest and, and stated that you had some interest in possibly looking to sell the property. So I want to reach out to you personally, number one, to introduce myself. And number two, to I guess just kind of see what your plans were. Hopefully we can put something together. We buy property all throughout the area. What, what, what were your, I guess, your plans with that one? Could you hear me okay? Um, it would probably be better if you called back later. Okay, I guess, and you, and just so I'm, I'm just so I'm 
I, I, I guess just so I'm, I'm, we're on the same page, you do have interest in possibly looking to sell the property? Maybe. Okay. And just so I know, I put my notes here, is it in pretty good shape or do you think it might need a little bit of work here and there? In good shape. Okay. It's in pretty decent shape. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I'm, I'm definitely glad I was able to reach you. Um, and I guess last question before I let you go, I know you, you might have to run. Did you maybe have a price or a range or a ballpark on what you were looking to get out of the property? If I were able to come in and purchase it as a what you see is what you get type of deal? Maybe a number you might be thinking of. Could you hear me okay? I'm not sure. I don't have to talk to my husband about it. Okay. Did you guys maybe have a range or a ballpark say, hey, look, if you can get me this price, we can think about moving forward. Did you maybe have something in mind? Probably 200000 Okay. So you want $200,000 for this particular property? Yes. Okay. And I'm assuming it's in pristine shape. Great shape, ready to rock and roll, move in ready type situation. We're living in it now. Okay. And and just so that I can know how if I was able to be anywhere near where you need to be as far as the price, did you already have a place to go? Were you thinking about moving somewhere else or what were your plans? I'm not sure. Okay, so it was just somewhat of a uh I guess you can say a thought. It wasn't something that was maybe realistic soon or maybe not soon or what do you okay so he she hung up i'm gonna call her back just really quickly she's not there but i'm gonna call her back just for for a show here because i seen somebody had mentioned just because somebody says they gotta go doesn't mean you can't extract information imagine i didn't ask her all those questions then she would have went in my follow-up bid and she's a dead lead anyway she's a dead lead two hundred thousand. the arv on that thing is like 170 you know what i mean so I got the, I got those questions answered. I could literally delete her. But if you don't push it, hello. If you don't push and ask those questions, it's gonna. Okay, boom. So she's not picking up. But I really want everyone to understand. Just because they say they gotta go doesn't mean you can't squeeze you know a couple questions out of them to say to, to push them in the qualified follow up or unqualified delete category. So now if, I'm, if that's going into my it's not going into my CRM. She's unrealistic. The property's in good shape and she's un. She's, she can't even really communicate. So it's, it's a dead deal, 1 million percent. But don't hang up just because they say they got to go. Extract, 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 and then decide what to do with that information. Million percent. Now, after Nick's riveting education on how to close a cell phone, <laughs> I want to give everyone education on the fact that that person with a voice deeper than me was a woman and not a man. <laughs> everyone in the comments was confused but that was a woman just throwing that out there how many <laughs> camel reds do you think that woman has smoked in her lifetime i mean more than i've ever smoked in my and life man or life. woman don't let them get off the phone until they answer your questions i'm going with 22 million camel reds i think your estimate still might be a little low possibly What's happening? Okay, cool. Let's try that again. Liam, what's the official? Oh, never mind. Oh, I thought that was the line for Liam. That's Nick and Liam. He's reusing it. Unoriginal. Udo's a comedian, though. He came in. He was clowning Aaron, too. Leave your name, number, and a short message, and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. I hope you're having a great day. God bless. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. 
Hey, Joe, this is RJ, and I'm having a great day. I know you're tired of being a landlord over there on Stanford Drive, so give me a call back so I can take that off your hands. Appreciate it. All right, your turn. Will I only talk to one seller in two hours? You can get a contract signed, too. Let's see here. Right. And people said it wasn't a deal. Last time you were on, you closed two contracts back to back. I'm gonna go with uh, yeah, it's five five nine. I'm trying to understand why people were so adamant that that wasn't a deal. Five five so nine. Right there, that one guy left. He was that upset about it. Three. Well, two. some people were saying that there was back taxes owed on it. I think they all misunderstood what he was saying. He paid them. Albert Sanchez. Oh, come on, Albert. Come on, man. Damn, I'm so used to Nick getting answers. I wasn't even looking on which one I want to call next. Come on, Albert. Pick up the... Your call has been forwarded to an automatic... We're going to ring him one last time. And if you try this technique, be prepared because they usually pick up on the third. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Five, five, nine... No answer. No so answer. I got a great question, right? Said it said, are these leads in your areas or what what are what uh, leads from the site are these? So these leads are not in any specific area. They are all across the board. I got to fix. You guys can see through the facade. You guys can see my green screen. But these leads are all across the U.S. There's no specific area that they're in. And in terms of what leads these are, these are leads that were never bought. So these are clearance leads, some sale leads. Um, but leads that were never purchased by anybody in any status. So this is the very bottom of the barrel leads, and RJ closed one contract today. Hey, is uh, Luigi there? Thank you. Luigi, this is RJ Bates calling you about your property on Wolf Street. Um, I think you entered it on our website saying that you were interested in selling that property. Oh, no, I'm good, thanks. Oh, okay. Uh, did, did you already sell it to somebody? Yeah. Oh, okay. How much did they offer you? Uh, 180. 180. All right. Uh, how how long ago did they call you? I'm sad we missed oh, we out on that. In a week. Oh, okay. Oh man, congratulations on the sale, and I'm happy that you found somebody. I, I apologize that it wasn't us. We should have gotten back to you faster. Okay. Thank you. All right, Luigi. Bye bye. All right. Bye. That would be a refund if somebody purchased that. Okay, let's see if we can get an answer here. Okay, we got a... I, I should have totally done that. It's a me, a Mario. <laughs> One to connect to eight four three four. Hope I didn't. Hope none of us called her. The assignment on the thirty-five hundred dollars is probably going to be pretty low. Just want to connect to eight four three four four. This is thirty-five hundred dollar contract. I mean. Come on, Deborah. I'm sorry. All right, last triple dial.
person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. No, okay. No voicemail possible, no answer. That's tough. I love when people are asking us what, what dialer we're using. Well, it's like you're literally holding your cell phone right there. <laughs> dialing in. <laughs> yeah. uh, someone asked that. This is called AT&T cell phone. <laughs> RJ is using a landline. Man. He's, going, he's going old school. Udo wants to know 80s, what products you use on your. Uh, he wants to know what products you use in your beard. Uh, Layright. Oh, oh that I, may, I know. Yeah, I got to get some of that for myself. Yeah. <laughs> You got to hit puberty first. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, I'm hurt, man. I'm hurt. What I lack in the, uh, what I lack in the beard, I make up for it. Four, four, eight, zero is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Christine, this is RJ calling about Silverado Trace Drive. Can you please... All right, I'm trying to take Nick's deal. <laughs> you can do that. I'll be happy for you. You're up, buddy. All right, we're going back to, uh, let's see here. Probably going to be going back to Texas. Ooh, Rub, we got a lot of onions in here. I, think oh, I don't know if my girlfriend would be very happy with me. I was rubbing onions on my face all day. Let's see here. I hey, one of my calls is getting transferred over. Okay, here. I'm just trying to find my Texas number. There it is right here. Let's see what happens. Well, Travel Junkie's uh, question might actually be, what, what app are you using? I'm using uh, I'm using CallRail. CallRail, okay. Okay. Weird. Try one more time. Yep. No, you're good. Back to nine five six three. We'll try one more time. I won't. I won't do a three dot. I've been doing it lately, but we'll try one more time. Please press one to connect to nine five six three seven two nine six three three. My answer. All right. Next up. I'm gonna call it Cali. We did use prop stream till they retired. Come on, Judy. Please leave your message for
Please leave. All right, buddy. Your turn. All right, we're bringing it back to uh, to LA. It looks like. Actually, no, we're not. I'm not calling that one because his name is Kevin Dutran. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Let me see here. Okay. Let's dial. Go to Virginia. Cash one, chicken net to seven one five. Hello. Hey, good afternoon, Olsen. Yeah. Hey, hey, Olsen, it's Nick. How are you? Good, good. I, I, I was reaching back out to you. Um, I believe you or somebody had put in some information online um, regarding your property here on, on, on North 11th Street. Uh, my name is Nick. I'm actually the owner of the company here. Wanted to reach out to you personally. And I guess just kind of get to know you a little bit and kind of see what your plans were for this one. We obviously specialize in purchasing property all throughout the area. Did, did, well, go ahead. What I want to do is I want to, I want to sell it. It's a six bedroom, two bath. Home setting on three city lots. Okay. And uh, I owe like right around thirty thousand on it yet. Okay. So I I want to get so it does need a new look. I'm in the process of putting new kitchen cabinets in now. So I've been working on the inside, not the outside. Okay. Okay. Is that this is something that you're in the pro? Are you in the process of rehabbing it, or are you just kind of fixing some things here and there, or what's going on with it? I've been just fixing it here and there because I have a full time job. I work for the school district. Okay, nice. Okay. So yeah, I I work on it here and there. And now this last spring, I had my right shoulder replaced, which oh wow, me way down. I could imagine. I could imagine. Oh, I've had my left knee replaced twice. Wow. I have done another 10 times before I have my shoulder redone. Wow. Wow. Okay. I, I mean, that's, I, I apologize. It's kind of hard to hear. I, I, I probably could not imagine the, uh, I guess, the, the pain and just kind of, you know, the process as far as getting it, getting, getting it done and then, you know, healing back up. So, um, but it sounds like you're doing, you know, hopefully a lot better now. And it sounds like I might have called you at the uh, most perfect time. I, I specialize in buying all throughout the area. So, um, you know, we do lots of work okay. here. And, and just, the, just so you kind of know how we buy them, we pretty much buy them and we call them what you see is what you get type of deals. Meaning if they need a little bit of work, that's okay. If they're in decent shape, that's okay. Uh, we cover the fees, we cover the closing costs. It doesn't cost you a penny, um, you know, so on and so forth. I'm sure you probably heard the terminology a million times. Um, I guess my, my couple of questions for, for as far as this one here, is it is it a rental? Is it vacant? Are you living in it or what's, what's going on with it? Okay, you're living in this one. And then you guys obviously have thought about a place to go or alternative plans as far as housing. Where were you, what were you looking to do or looking to go if you did sell it? Well, what we're going to do is I can sell this. Like I said, I want 65 for it. It's only be about 35000 and we're packing up. I'm old, and I don't like the winters up here, mm -hmm. and we're moving to Florida. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> you're moving. You're I've been guaranteed a job down there. Okay. Congratulations. Like my brother that has a flooring business. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Move down here. He says, I'll put you to work. Okay. Incredible. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, Florida is definitely um, a good place to be as weather-wise. I'll tell you that right now. Um, I'm actually, um, you know, spend a lot of time in, in Southern California specifically because of the weather and also spend some time have a lot of good friends who live out in miami florida so it's an incredible place to be so you're you're definitely headed to uh to a great place and so i'd love to be able to help get you there quicker we're gonna do is we're gonna... go ahead uh, yeah go ahead 
Yeah, but well, this is our plan. And then if I decide to work for my brother, I'll take it. We're going to try to get the school district down there and work for the school district down there. Okay, great. And, and just so I have a little bit of a time frame. Um, how soon, like, for example, I know you had mentioned that you were looking to get 65000 out of the property. I'm not saying that I can do that. I think that we're definitely in it, probably in the same ballpark. Uh, but if I was able to be right around where you need to be, how soon were you looking to get everything going as far as, um, you know, getting the process started? Are you looking for, you know, 30, 60, 90, 90 days out to move? Uh, what, what does that time frame look like as far as you moving from point A to point B? Probably 90 days, yeah. Okay. That's what I was thinking. It sounds like you're going to need a little bit of time to obviously, number one, relocate, number two, move your things, and then number three, get situated with your job. Um, the beauty the beauty of the program is that I pay all cash and we can pick the closing date out together. Meaning, if you wanted to close uh, on the property and then get 30 or 90 days to move out, um, we're able to accommodate that and make that happen. If you say, hey, Nick, you know, I'm, I'm able to open up the escrow, but I want to close at this specific time or this specific date, we're able to make that happen uh, because we're paying all cash and covering 100% of all the fees. Um, do you think that you might need the extra cash to kind of move you from point A to point B? Probably, yeah. Okay, that's what I was thinking. I'm just kind of putting myself in your shoes. And if I was moving from point A to point B, I'd probably want a little bit of extra cash. What I've done with clients very similar to, you know, kind of in your situation is we set a date to close on the property and then you get 90% of your proceeds. Um, and then the other, the other 10% once you officially vacate the property, um, something like that. Sometimes it's 10%, sometimes it's 5%, sometimes it's 3%. Um, but what happens is you get that cash immediately and then you're able to u- utilize it to get from point A to point B. And then we still give you 60 to 90, 90 days to move out. Um, will something like that possibly work for you? Possibly. Okay. And, and did you have any other, you know, creative ideas in mind? That's just something that I kind of thought of that would probably best accommodate or help you out. Not off the top of my head, no. Okay. Um, and I guess a, lot, a couple of last questions here. Um, I guess, you know, I know you had mentioned this 6-5 number. Um, if if I'm able to to be right around there, um, I mean, how soon were you looking to get the process started? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Be honest, but yeah. Oh, just say that. I think you broke up. Say that one more time. I said I'm not sure. Okay, you said you're not. Just kind of up. Go ahead. You're just kind of up in the air. Started me. Because. Okay. Yeah. So here's what I'm thinking. And you let, you let me know if this possibly works. Um, I'm going to do some homework right now while we're on the phone. Prior to giving you a call, um, I did do some homework and try and figure out where I have to be as far as the price. Um, and we're definitely in the same ballpark. It's, it's you know, for us, we make um, fair offers and, and definitely trying to make and create win-win transactions and win-win situations. Um, what I'd like to do is get you over some paperwork for you to take a look at. Let me know if you have any questions. And then if it looks good, we can you know, talk about moving forward. How's that sound? Okay. Uh, what, if, I, if I could figure what is your best email address? Uh, Moles Place 102 at yahoo.com. It's spelled F O E S P L A C E 102 okay so i have m o e s p l a c e 102 at yahoo.com is that correct right. okay and i and yeah. and um are you yeah. are you the only one on title or is there somebody else on title tell you what i said are you the only, the only one on title or is there somebody else as well Oh, nice. Okay, great. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I'm going to have my assistant actually right now draft something uh, together and I'll tell you what it is. It's basically a preliminary purchase agreement. Um, doesn't mean you sold anything at all. It just um, states that I'm purchasing the property in as is condition. So no fixing, no repairing, no maintenance, no real estate commission. It states that my company is going to cover 100% 
of all the fees that are involved. So basically, it's not going to cost you a penny. Um, and it also states that, you know, you're going to get to pick out the closing date. So if you, you know, give me a call and say, hey, Nick, I want to close March 1st or April 1st or whatever it may be, we're able to accommodate um, and make that happen. How's that sound? Okay. Good. Yeah. And then, and, and so basically, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email this, oh, this document over to you. Uh, I'm going to confirm that you got it. And I want you to kind of see it and, and let me know if you have any questions. Um, and then we'll just kind of just rock and roll. Okay. And no worries at all. Um, yeah. I just want to make sure you got it. Um, my, my, my sister's drafting it up right now. I actually just emailed over all the details. So she's drafting it up right now. Um, but, and we'll just kind of, any, any big plans over the weekend, by the way? Pardon? I said, any big plans over the weekend? I know we got a big weekend coming up. Any big, any big plans? No. Just kind of, just. <laughs> no, no fishing, no, no sporting events, no dinners, nothing like that. Oh, it's, it's too darn cold for me to go Okay, I know, I hear that. How about right now? It's like right now it's like one bowl. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna love Florida then. Oh yeah. Do you visit often? Huh? Do you visit Florida often? Oh well, you're you're gonna love it. Like I said, I had I oftentimes go visit a couple of my buddies down in Miami. Incredible atmosphere, incredible weather, um, incredible cocktails. Just an incredible place uh, to be. So I'm sure you're gonna have a great time. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something to look forward to. Are, are you are you originally from Virginia? No, been in Wisconsin my whole life. Oh, no. Are you a Badger fan? You and I both. I still watch sports. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of football, baseball. I mean, you name it. But uh, it was pretty troubling to see that take place. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, yeah. Yep, so. I used to watch the Packers play all the time. And, oh, I don't even watch sports. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a shame. But you're probably in the same boat as a lot of people. They just got turned off. You know, why? You know, spend money on tickets. Why spend money on outings and things like that when you, uh, you know, I, I think kind of make those things separate. Politics and sports uh, really shouldn't clash. I don't know if you if you would agree with that. Shouldn't wouldn't cross paths. But um, so you were originally a Packer fan. Yep. Nice. Did you? And I'm, I know you didn't watch the game, but it might make you feel a little bit better. The Packers just took an, a nasty loss to the 49ers this weekend. This past weekend. So now they're uh, they're gone. Yeah. So they're uh, they're pretty done. Uh, really quickly, can you do you have access to your email on your smartphone by chance, Olson? Yeah. Okay. I just sent you over a preliminary purchase agreement. It should come from from Cross Country Offer. Um, can you let me know if you received that that that, that agreement? Okay, so do you want to put me on speakerphone and I'll walk you through it? Again, I just want to make sure that you receive the document so that I know that you got it. Well, can you call me, call me sometime tomorrow because I got to get back to work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what, what, I'll, what I'll go ahead and do is, Olsen, if you can check your email sometime tonight when you're off work. I'll respect. I know you're at work. I don't want to bug you. But if you can check your email tonight when you're off work. And let me know if you have any questions about the agreement. Again, it's a two-page preliminary purchase agreement. Um, you know, let me know if you have any questions and I'll give you a holler sometime tomorrow. Does the morning or afternoon work better for you tomorrow when I call? Probably in the morning after 10. Okay, sometime, sometime probably between 10 and 11? Yeah. Okay, I'll make a note here to give you a call sometime between 10 and 11. Uh, what I'd love for you to do, like I said, is just kind of take a look at the agreement. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I did include a purchase price in there as well of 65,000, just like you had requested cash. And um, also, um, you know, if everything looks looks good to go tomorrow, when I call you, I can walk you through the next possible steps. What I'm also going to do in the meantime is talk to our team here and just kind of put together 
a, a, a possible plan because I know that you're going to need at least 30, 60 to 90 days to move out of the property. Did you need moving assistance as well? No. Okay, you got everything covered? I, just, you, I said you got everything covered? Yeah, because what I'm going to do is basically sell everything I own. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Start fresh? Not not a bad not not a bad not a bad idea you know what I mean I I, I oftentimes um, do the exact same thing when I move from from point A to point B just like a new fresh new beginnings new furniture new everything so uh, I'm definitely excited um, and I'm glad that we were able to connect I'm glad that we were able to um, you know talk about moving forward and I'll give you a call make a note here between ten and eleven o'clock to, uh, tomorrow morning take a look at the agreement. Let me know if you have any questions, and then hopefully tomorrow we can talk about moving forward and then the next possible steps. Sounds good. Okay, this is my number, by the way. If you want to go ahead and store it, feel free to, so you know that it's me, Colin. Yeah. If you have any questions, shoot me a text. I answer about 97% yeah. of the time, um, even if it's you know closer to you know the night hours, 9, 10 o'clock at night. Let me know if any questions, comments, concerns. I look forward to uh, doing business together, and hopefully we can make something happen. Okay, Olson? My name is Nick, Nick, N-I-C-K, Nick, Nick Lovano. Yep. And Olsen, really quickly, is this the best um, contact? Do you have a cell phone number? I'm, I'm sure this, I mean, I'm sorry, a house number, or is this the best contact number to reach you? This is the best number because it's the only phone I got. Okay. Okay, great. Then I'll go ahead and put that into the notes as well, and then we'll go ahead and rock and roll from there. Sounds good. Okay. We'll talk to you very soon. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye. Ooh. Very close there. Very close. Yeah, he, he just wasn't going to sign it right now. I just I want to make it. But, you know, I, I think for sure with a solid follow up tomorrow, that's that's ink all day. I think so. I think that's going to be money. Nick, are you a big KPI guy? Um, Decent. Not not too much, to be honest. Just like the, the, the bare minimum type. Why? I answer my phone 97% of the time. I was like, <laughs> I want to pay 97. <laughs> I just want him to know that it's, I'm real, you know? Like, hey, look, if you got to reach me, um, I'm real. Give me a call. I was like, Nick must be the KPI guy in his company right there, throwing out specific numbers. You know, it makes it sound a little bit better. But, I mean, I, I really I, – the only reason why I even said I, I say stuff like that is because, like, I'm like, dude, this guy just – I'm trying to put myself in there. This guy just – he didn't cold call me, but he cold called me, essentially. Right. You know, who the hell is this guy? So I'm just trying to make it as real as possible. I'm just hoping that I get someone else to answer the phone. I'm I'm gonna try I, this I, guy. Yeah, hey, RJ, you keep getting uh, you keep getting shot down, man. I I, I keep getting voice mouse. <laughs> I feel like this is every single, every single one. You keep uh, getting voicemailed, you keep getting ready, but you're still making the closings happen. I'm just happy I talked to at least one to keep my perfect streak alive. <laughs> what? what is this? I'm, I'm calling this dude back. Every single time Nick calls, he gets someone on the phone. Come on. What is that, man? Also, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, R.J. Bates is a famous TikToker now. I've heard that he's going to go actually join the Hype House out in California. He's been practicing some of those dances. I got a million views. <laughs> All right, Nick. Go ahead. Bill asked a good question. How many leads do you have to buy from speed to lead to land a deal? You're able to cherry pick your leads, so it can happen pretty quickly. But, of course, it's still a sales game, right? Numbers is going to beat everything. It depends on your conversion method. So there's not Liam, one set in stone number, though. I, Based off of my shows on these uh -huh. old leads. Yep, on these old one leads. Out of every, one out of every seven dials has been a contract. Whew. One out of every now, seven dials. Tonight's numbers are going to hurt that because I'm not getting any answers. But I still got a contract. So. And I probably got. I'm honestly like probably like two, like you know, just it's a day or right. two away. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, that guy cool. you're definitely you're heading heading now. I'm selling to you, but I'm gonna do it tomorrow. 
How much and how much were these? How much were those leads worth? They're cheap. These are the leads nobody bought. These are the leads nobody wanted. Everybody looked at them and passed them up. So let me see. Um, I'm gonna dial on. I want something in California. I want something that's like these California people want a million dollars for their stuff. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call this one in California. It's on my personal phone. Nine seven two. You know, these buyers are paying a uh, top dollar out here in Cali, too. Well, you'd be surprised if they're paying out here. Surprised. So, if anybody have California deals, please send them my eye. I'm in good old Minnesota. We'll land of new together. Hedge funds. Well, I'll buy the thing from you. We'll do something together. This one here is in, uh, I know where this house is at. Patrick, if you're still, uh, if you're still watching, I know there was a deal that you guys. Well, I'm gonna try and dial it one more time. Well, I know that there was a deal that you guys had in Minnesota that you guys had me look at that was locked up super high. I forwarded it to my friend, whatever ended up happening with that one. Uh, I can't remember what that was. We it sold like it. Two properties, two properties, one lot. We didn't. We sold it, but it didn't make it to closing. Oof. Yep, makes sense. There was an issue with title or something. Something came up. I don't know. Death, COVID, something like that. It just it killed the deal. If that property was four blocks north from where it was, it would have been worth double what it is. Yeah. I'm just blowing her up the third last time. I'm gonna pass this pass. I'm gonna pass it over. There you go. Is that RJ Tabitha is giving you a lot of love right now. What's up, Tabitha? Thank you so much. Bill said, "Do you guys like the North Carolina market? I do." There's a lot of good deals and a lot of hedge funds out there. They're easy to buy. Yeah, a lot okay. of hedge funds. Yeah. Okay. Max Maxwell likes North Carolina. <laughs> Michael says everyone likes NC Market. <laughs> That's true. That Steve's got a uh, Steve's got an appointment with Rock. On two dash four, I'm gonna be in San Diego. Stealing a skate. For all the people uh, close to West Palm Beach, I'm gonna be there this weekend speaking at an event. With the, nice. Uh, which, which event is that, RJ? Uh, N R E I C. Chris Jefferson is gonna be there. Hi, is Judith there? Hey, Judith, this is RJ Bates calling you about your property on Joey Drive. You had entered it on our website saying you were looking to sell that. Are you still looking to sell? Uh, yes, I am. Excellent. Okay. How much are you looking to get for that? Um, would I be able to call you back? I am actually driving back from the airport. Um, sure. I, I only have a couple of questions. Is it, uh, is it not possible for you to chat while we're on the phone right now? Um, for a couple minutes, I just don't like being in traffic. <laughs> I gotcha. Well, I'm uh, I'm about as fast as they come. So, uh, is it currently listed on the MLS? No, it's not. It was listed, and then we took it because we were having a problem with the realtor. So she is no longer our, our agent. Gotcha. And so, how much were you looking to get for it again? The three seventy-five to three eighty. Okay. All right. Now, give me a couple minutes. You can just focus on driving while I take a couple minutes here, okay? Okay. All these realtors are climbing out of woodwork now. And it's like, no, we fired the real estate agent for a reason. I don't want another realtor. Oh, I, I'm not a realtor. I'm a buyer. Oh, no, no, I'm 
sorry, I was talking to my mom. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just making sure you knew. I yeah, I'm not. Uh, yeah, we yeah we everybody that we keep talking to is like, well, let me send my realtor over. I'm like, no. I'm like, there's a reason I'm looking for cash buyers. If we wanted another realtor, we would have already just on with listed with somebody else. But we're avoiding that because we have other things that we've got going on that are going to get massively screwed up if the house doesn't get sold. Okay, and how quickly do you need to sell? As quick as possible. We have an offer in a house up in Pennsylvania, and I don't want to lose that because they, our real estate agent here dropped the ball on two separate offers, and then we could lose our house. Right. Does it need any work to it? Um, it probably needs updating, but it's a solid. There's no like, there's no damage to the house. The roof is good. It's from 2011. Um, it was built in 91. There was new plumbing done under the sink, I think, in 2019. Two bedroom, two bath, his and her closets with the his and her sink, garden tub, the glass shower, and like the separate bathroom in the bathroom. I see. I see the pictures online now. I, I don't know why I asked you that oh, question. God, those are awful pictures. That was another problem is it looks like an asylum and she never, she just, she wouldn't change them. It's very washed out looking. The furniture is even the wrong color. I would agree with that. It does look very cheaply done. Most realtors, yeah. you know, they hire a professional photographer. Um, and it just doesn't look like they did. <laughs> right. So you said you wanted, what was it again? 350? 375 to 380. 375, okay. Um, and how many square feet? It's four, four, like 1,500 square feet? It, it does have HOA. It is in a gated community. Uh, it has pool, tennis courts. Not on that the house, but in the community, they have pool and tennis courts, a, a, a clubhouse. It's not age restricted. So the issue that I'm running into, I mean, I'm interested in the property, but the issue I'm running into is that in order to give you the cash offer as an investor, you know, I have to take into consideration what I would need to do to maximize the value. So I'm looking at some of the comps that have sold higher. And then I'm trying to figure out, you know, what I need to do to, to get it to mirror those properties. And then obviously I need a, some sort of spread there, right? I'm going to have holding costs. I'm going to need to make money myself. I got to feed my kids, you know, and 375 is just a little bit. I know you need to get an offer quickly, so I understand. So you need an investor to come in and give you that cash offer, but there needs right. to be a give and take there. So, I mean, are you negotiable off of that or is that the number yeah. you have to have? No, we're negotiable. Okay. Because, I mean, your, your offer in Pennsylvania, when do you need to have this, uh, like an offer secured in, on your property in Florida? have closed between Florida and the house up north by February 18th and we never got a pre-approval or anything while the real estate agent did so everything fell through twice so we were already under contract twice and then we're under contract for a new house up north and we're trying not to lose that I see Those are like in the same boat. We need the money to move, and they need the money to move to their new house. Right. So that's why we were going with an investor instead of trying to put a down payment and finding a mortgage. And it's just, it's too long and too drawn out. So, you know the property on 230 Joey Drive, like just right down the street from you? Are you familiar with that one? Your, does your property have a pool? No. Ah, damn it. Okay. Um, that that was like my my best comp. That was that was gonna be the one that was really gonna help me. Um, let me see this other one real quick.
Okay, so this other one doesn't have a, a pool, but it it was remodeled. Um, let me do some quick math here. I mean, we are probably we're probably going to be in like the high twos. Like no, I, that definitely wouldn't cover what we need. I know. Um, do you have an underlying mortgage on it? Yes, we do. <clears throat> How much cash do you need to move to Pennsylvania? Ninety thousand. How much do you owe on your mortgage? Two sixty-two. Jeez. Okay. Okay, I mean, I'm just going to be real with you. I'm, I'm about as creative as they come when it comes to this, but based off of what the property values are in the area and the cash to close that you need, I the only thing that I could possibly think of is there might be a hedge fund out there that would buy this property, and I can do some research to see if there is one in this particular part of Florida. Um, I've never known one to, to buy in this particular area, but I can I can reach out and see. Um, they might be willing to pay close to what you're wanting, but, um, you know, someone like me, who's, you know, going to come in and, and do the work there, I just don't think that we can. So I'll, uh, I'll do my research and see what I can and I'll get back to you. Okay. All right. That was, uh, that was rough. Well, she uh, she originally had that listed for four hundred, and I think her value was probably around three eighty, three ninety. Oh man, wow! Mm -hmm. And so she needed to get three. She has to get three fifty to do what she's wanting to do. She ain't gonna get it. Her house is outdated. So let me ring ring one in real quick. I'll ring it in the last second. Liam, how many more calls are you you're gonna allow here? You're the judge. I mean, I'm thinking that we're gonna get one more each. Nick one started it, and it's it's approaching the two hour mark, so we'll get Nick one, and then just to make the same amount of calls, you get one, and then we'll call it there. All right, good to go. Let me see here. We're going back to uh, let me see. She has to net three fifty, which isn't gonna happen. Absolutely not, Steve. You're right. Yep. And, and for any of you guys who are agents out there, don't ever try and overprice your property just to, you know, I don't know, sociologically, social, I don't know what the word is here, right? But artificially inflate the value because people are going to be so number based. What they're going to be looking for is a deal that inflates the hype. And then the hype is what's going to be the marketing to and then increase the cost of starting a bidding war. You underprice the property on the market. If it's worth 380, you list it for 365, generate hype around it. You get booked for the listings. You only have a two day listing period. Right, Sunday or Saturday, Sunday. Then come Monday, you close it off. You're gonna have offers well above 380. And hire a professional photographer. Sorry, but the per. Hello. Hello. Hey, good afternoon. I was calling for Brent. Hey, hey, Brent, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay, hi, how are you? My, my name is Nick. I, I was reaching back out to you. I believe you had put in some information online uh, regarding your property here on Slaughter. Uh, I'm reaching back out to you. I'm one of the owners of the company. Uh, just kind of want to see what your plans were and see what you're looking to do. We obviously specialize in uh, purchasing property all throughout the area. Thanks for the call, mate. Okay, great. Again, I'm going to put your name here. Uh, been pretty swamp. We're a pretty high volume company. So, I'm, and I wanted to reach out to you as, as the owner just to kind of, again, get to know you. And I guess you see what you were looking to do. Uh, we're just, uh, I had it here's paid for. We got it up. We have an appraisal on it. We're getting ready to put it up for sale. We're moving out back. Okay, anyway, so, we're moving. okay so you have an appraisal on the property. 
Um, we and, did it appraised, yes. Okay, what did the appraisal come in at? 185. 185. And then what do you are you looking to put it on the market or are you looking are you looking for a cash offer or what are we looking to do? No, we're gonna to try to sell I think you broke up, Sid. Hey, one more time, Brett. I said, well, I filled that thing out and somebody would come in with that money and then we'll sell it. Okay, so if someone could computer if someone yeah. if someone could commit to uh, the one eighty five price point, you'd be open to selling. Is that what you said? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Is this one in pretty good shape, or do you think you might need some work here and there? It's got two bathrooms. Uh huh. I think you're breaking. I think you're breaking up, Brent. Say that one. I'm not sure. If, I, don't have, um, I don't have good. You said you might not have good service. Is that what it is? Uh, both bathrooms are complete. Uh huh. There's three bedrooms, four car garage, apron, bath, uh, the furnace, and AC, and hot water. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty decently difficult to hear you, but I guess you, I guess to make a long story short, you're saying that the property is in pretty good shape. Does it need a lot of work? Is that what it is? It does not need a lot of work. It's in pretty. It's like move in ready type of situation. Wow. Okay. Okay. Great. And you're and are you stuck at that price point as far as the one? Eight five number. Is there any wiggle room at all as far as that one? No, no wiggle room at all as far as that one eight five number. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. What would you probably list it at? What, what would you probably list this one at, Brett? We might start at two twenty million. Wow. Okay. And you know, I'll I'll be honest with you. And I'll I'll just kind of cut to the chase. Uh, with this particular deal here, I wouldn't want to waste your time and try and give you an offer. You probably wouldn't like my offer anyway. It wouldn't even make sense, especially if you have put work into the property. But what I could do is, and what I recommend is if you're looking to get the 185 number and possibly more than that, is I could refer you to one of my uh, real estate agents and brokerages that can meet with you. Oh, okay. You have one already? You have one already, Brent? Okay. So this this deal here um, is a dead deal. It's not even worth a call back. Um, I think I have the ARV at about 160, 170 on this bad boy. He's asking 185. Um, no one's going to pay 185 for this thing. Secondly, uh, he I tried to go for the referral just in case you guys have, you know, agents in that area. He probably, he has an agent already. So he knows what's going on. Um, it's just, it just, unfortunately, just he's interested in selling. And he went to the website and put in the 185 thinking he's going to get 185. That's not, unfortunately, what he is going to get. All you can do is all you can do with that bad boy there. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to call this guy named Joe. Joe's going to answer on the, the third ring. And then he's going to tell me that he's willing to sell it for $20,000 below my MAO. And then I'm going to make an offer $10,000 less than that. And he's going to sign a contract. Speaking into existence, baby. Oh, we're speaking it into existence. I hope he answers. <laughs> Probably not. Remember, you have dialed. Double dial that. Double dial it. Hold on. Let me just make sure I wrote the number down right. Okay, okay. Let me dial the other numbers over there. His name is Joe. The number you have dialed. Is that is that how we're ending it? Is that it, Liam? That's, hey, that's the rules. That's the rules. Liam's back. All right. Awesome. Oh, well, one second, guys. My food actually arrived. You guys just talk amongst yourselves for like 30 seconds. So I'll go grab that. You're All right. Me and Nick are going again. Nick, call someone. Call Liam, someone. I got to go grab food. I, I know. They're calling right. you right, they're calling right now. Let's the the phone. Let's, let's end this thing. <laughs> he's in, we're ending the show, and he's like, oh, I got to go get my Uber Eats. Where'd he go? He left. He left. Where'd he go?
Uh, you want to dial another one? I'll dial another one. How this guy just get up and leave to get the food? <laughs> I know. He's supposed to be doing the poll to see who won. It, and he's like. Does he drop hey. the poll? Does he drop it? He, yeah, I don't have it. He does it. You want to just take some Q and A's? I mean, honestly, let's just take some Q and A's. I know people got questions for sure. Uh, how, uh, do you know how many you, people are in there? You got your boys here. This is an easy win for Nick. Easy win. <laughs> right. so Why did I hate on my contract so bad? This crowd did, did not like my contract whatsoever. That's what I want to know. Why did they hate my $3,500 contract so bad? We'll put the response to that question in there. What's your from? How many people do we have on here? We have right now 130. Liam, did you grab the food? We're waiting for you to, to, to drop yeah, the link. Link the poll, bro. These people are, are hating on my, my $3,500 contract. Where'd he go? He left again. Liam. He left, he left the whole thing. All right, somebody put in there why why the contract was why you didn't like the contract. Liam, you good, man? I'm back. Liam, Liam might have retired from this show. He might have just said, I'm done. <laughs> the closings were too hot. I had to go cool down. It's cold outside. I had to run out there. All right, Liam, you wanna drop you wanna drop the poll? And we're gonna take Let's drop the poll. Sounds good. That sounds great. And I, I, I still want to stay on and do some Q&A. I know people got questions, too. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. John says the reason why he didn't like it is because I could have gotten the contract for $500 to 1000 But, John, he told me very clearly what he needed. He said, I need $3,500. So, to save his house. I'm in the business of helping people solve their problems. So, if the guy tells me... I have a house that I'll sell you for $3,500 to save my house right now. Then why am I going to try to make an additional $1,000 or $2,000? I can solve his problem, make him happy, get a good referral, testimonial from him. I'm going to go make $5,000. Why am I going to try to make $7,000? I'm not in the business to be greedy. I'm in this to solve people's problems. I think that there's a lot of people who get in the industry and they're thinking of sales money. But if you put the seller first in one of these situations and you focus on solving the problem before solving your financial issues, you're going to get so many more deals done. I guarantee it 100%. In every single one of my calls, I'm listening to the seller figuring out what their problem is. So that way I can figure out what the solution is and I'm actually helping people. Right. I mean, so there's so many new wholesalers that just come in and I mean, a they'll be locking up contracts way above any any reasonable offer. And like you got to understand these are people's actual lives you're playing with. Right. Just because you don't see them face to face doesn't make them any less real. This is a dude in a real financial situation that we're helping. Right. Dude, he, he literally so, said, if I don't get thirty five hundred dollars, I'm going to lose this yeah. house. And I'm gonna have to you drop in the, are you dropping the voting, by the way? Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. just going to. So I wanted to do a little bit of a recap for everybody to know just kind of what the tail of the tape was tonight. RJ got a contract signed and sent back in. So let that weigh in your decision. Nick got very close. I think he got two contracts sent out. No one or none returned quite yet. But you guys have listened to everything tonight. You guys can make informed decisions. This link is being spammed everywhere. You guys are going to have five minutes to vote. In the meantime, in the chat, drop any questions you guys have. And we're going to let Nick and RJ just go to town. Yeah, I'm going to do a Q&A them. as well. I don't, I don't for sure. I'm getting calls back right now from some of these sellers. Everybody who's here, all 100, uh, 130 of you guys, get in there and get voting. That was 130. That's a good number. That is a good number. Chris says, uh, my newest minty could have locked that up. I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It was an easy one. <laughs> I, but I, I talked to two sellers, you know. I mean, I mean that's, that's what I got thrown at me, so. 
These people were brutal tonight. Everybody, make sure you're getting on there, getting on there and voting. So far, we've got about 40 votes, only 40 votes, and we've got 130 of you guys yeah, here. Yeah, 130, so we got to step up the voting yeah. on this, boy. I don't think you guys understand that the game questions, by the way. Yeah, the honestly, if you've already voted. Let's drop some questions because I know RJ and I are going to for a little bit and definitely mm -hmm. answer some questions. Either way, yeah. um, there's two beasts here that are present. So I know that we're down to stay on and ask these questions because there's a lot of things that both of us did, which we'll dive into in a second. That's like I took, I had some takeaways. So I know that the audience had takeaways for sure. So if you already voted, let's drop some questions so we can we can yeah. spend you know 10 or 15 minutes answering some questions so everybody leaves with as much value as humanly possible. Either way, there's very few people that are willing to uh put it all out there live um because anything can go wrong. You know, well, including, you put including no answers, including no answers, including you know, um just all kind of shit. This so. is the real stuff right here. I mean, this is this is what you would be going through on a daily basis you know we we're just putting it out of here and the thing that i love about it is nick really had nothing to gain or lose by coming on here i asked nick hey do you want to do this and he's like yeah i'm willing to put my brand on the line and, and showcase what i'm able to do where i'll be honest with you there's a lot of people out there that will not come on these lives oh. they they will not do it they will not showcase what theory they teach so i appreciate the fact that nick's one of the real ones that will come on here and showcase hey i don't just teach theory i actually do this and you could clearly see that nick had a system like the way that he does stuff it was very a repeatable process and that's what i tell all of my people listen i don't you don't necessarily have to do it my way in fact i i recommend you don't do it my way because you have a different personality than me what i do love about the way nick did it was is that you could see there was a repeatable process there that you can duplicate over and over and over again tj has a question here how do you get hedge fund buyers it's a great question i can i can share a little bit i can share a piece of it uh relationships networking and value Right. I had somebody reach out to me. Um, and I'm, I'm probably not even the biggest hedge fund guy. Obviously, I have relationships with uh, a handful. Uh, and RJ can talk to, touch upon this subject as well. But the only way I was able to really get in with these hedge funds is because I was brought in because of relationships, meaning somebody kind of brought me in. Sounds like a drug deal. But someone brought me in, introduced me to somebody um, and said, hey, look, this guy's doing hundreds of deals in your areas. You should definitely connect with him. Put us on a three way call. And I was able to share value. I said, hey, I do hundreds of deals. Love to make it happen with you. They, you know, and so I was brought in through the third party credibility. And I met that person that brought me in through networking and you know, the years of being in the industry. RJ, what are your thoughts? I know you might even have more than me. Yeah, I mean, we've we've done it multiple different ways. Um, I mean, some of it is just by reaching out to our network. So, like what I was talking about there, about hey. I don't know a specific hedge fund that buys in St. Augustine, Florida, because I've never done a deal in St. Augustine, Florida, but I do know people that are in that area. So I'm going to contact them and ask them and we'll probably JV this first deal with them. Um, other ways is we bought lists that have hedge funds on there. Um, and then we just straight cold call them and say, Hey, look, can you send us our buy box? Majority of the time hedge funds are pretty giving about this is our very specific criteria that we're looking for. Um, so if you can hit this, um, and then, you know, the other thing is, is just by, uh, scraping within the systems to find where the big buyers are. I mean, uh, prop streams linked properties tool was pretty cool in this regard. You, you knew when you found a good hedge fund, when there's billions of dollars of linked properties to it. So it's, uh, it was good. There you go. Gene says Justin Setzer knows all Florida hedge funds plus more. Good deal. Come into it bringing value, right? Bring somebody a deal and say, hey, look, if we do this JV together, can I get a hedge fund buyer out of it? Something like that. If you come in providing value to others and wanting to help others up, they will help you up 100% of the time. Gotcha. 
All right. So what? How many votes we got, Liam? Well, yeah, we are current. We are currently at seventy votes. We're at seventy, 70. votes. So that's like half of the the crowd. Half the crowd. I mean, how many are live on here? We've right got 100, now. 100 right now, we've got to drop down to one hundred and twenty. You know. All right, Jonathan wants to know what's the conversion on Speed Lead calls to contract specifically for me if I'm using them. So specifically on this show, prior to tonight, it was one out of every seven dials has dials has led to a contract. Okay. Now, obviously tonight, I I don't know how many dials I made, but I only spoke to two. Well, I spoke to three people. One had already sold, so I only spoke to two sellers. Um, but one of those led to a contract. I would say the the reality of the situation when you're buying the leads is a lot different because you get to cherry pick which ones you want. So you can look at the location, you can look at their motivation, you can look at why they're wanting to sell and, and really make a solid decision before you purchase. And if you're doing that, I think you can really have whatever kind of results you're looking for. You know, the key is your follow-up game. The other thing is we're just talking about dials tonight. I mean, this isn't what we would do in our business. We're going to be doing follow-ups and text messages and emails and whatever is necessary to make sure we're getting the deal, you know? Mm -hmm. The fortune is in the follow-up. Yes. 100%. And we're, and Brian, we're going to go, I mean, we're literally like, you know, speeding the entire sales process up like a lot of these things imagine like i had quite a bit of them like it's it's like normally people are going to take one to two to three calls you know what i mean that's just the reality of it but like what i like what i love to do and what i found the most effective is just trying to to, to speed up that process meaning get them the paperwork asap because imagine you call them then another call then the paperwork then another call and then they sign it right so imagine you, Obviously, they have to want it. They have to be they have some type of rapport. They have to, you know, agree upon the price. But get them that paperwork first. So the next call, you're just like, hey, John, reach back out to you. Have you I'm just calling you to see if you have a chance to review and initial the document that I sent you over on Wednesday. You know what I mean? If you can, you know, so try and speed up that process. Speed to lead. Um, TJ wants to know. Um, RJ, you assess the comps on your call so quick. Could you tell us more about that quick mental process? What are the few, your first few things you look at? So I, the way I have my setup, that helps, right? So I already have my email, the contract, and then I have my, my StreamYard link. Um, and then over here, I've got my batch leads open. Previously, I would have my prop stream open when they were doing comps. And then I have DocuSign open. So I'm I'm prepared for anything. So as the lead comes in and I'm on the phone, as we're going through the initial steps of, hello, this is RJ. Are you still looking to sell? I'm copy and pasting the address in the batch leads to pull comps, right? And then you'll see, I immediately ask, hey, because this is a warm lead coming to us, did you have a, a price in mind? Uh, because I think if you catch them off guard that early on a warm lead, they're going to be more than likely just to give you a number. And you saw that tonight on both of them. The two sellers I talked to, they both within 10 seconds of being on the phone gave me a number. And so now we're immediately into, I can start asking about the condition and stuff like that while I'm pulling comps. Um, and then from there, just saying, hey, can I make that number roughly work? I mean, if they're asking for 200000 and I'm looking at a bunch of $100,000 comp, I'm not going to waste my time on that call. I'm probably going to get off pretty quick. So. That's kind of my process on why, uh, you know, I can kind of maneuver these calls pretty quickly. What, uh, Liam, how are we as far as the amount of votes that have come in? Did it go up? We are currently at, it did go up. We're right under 80. No, we're at 81. We're at 81. I mean, guys, based is it on close the or is it, is it a blowout? It is close. It is very close. However, the distance between the two is slowly but surely spreading. Oh, oh. So now you guys can't see the results quite yet. I mean, how about this? For me, central time, it is 627.
We're going to wait three minutes at 6.30. We will announce the results right here live. That works. All right. Three okay. minutes, people. Go get your votes in. Yeah. Three minutes. Get them in. Get them in. Get them in. Um, anybody else? I, I'm down to do some more questions. How yeah, much did you guys make on your first deal, says Christian Roberson? Um, I made 90 grand on my first ever wholesale deal five, six years ago. Man. Yeah. What a way to what a way to to get in the industry. What a way. Seriously. Yeah. First first ever whole. So it was a uh, foreclosure and tax delinquent property. 30, 30 thousand back on taxes and then uh, foreclosure date was 30 days out. And and that's that's back in the day when we were doing this. Six years ago, we were door knocking. <laughs> so Ooh, that's how I started door knocking foreclosures. That's uh that's that Cali life too though. Yeah, you know, we were door knocking foreclosures in like Central California, Northern California, and uh, right. Cali County. This was like six years ago though. You don't see too much of that now, but there's, I mean, it probably still works. I'm sure. Right. If you if you haven't lived until you've door knocked foreclosures. So Kathy and I, when we got into this, uh, well, when we first became entrepreneurs, we were door knocking to sell roofs in Texas. So 100, 110 degree days with 100% humidity, we were walking around and door knocking to try to get roof sales. Yeah, we didn't even know anything about wholesaling or real estate or anything like that. Hey, uh, Liam, this is a great question for you. Let's see, what is it? Have you noticed a specific motivation pattern that is closing? What do you mean by that? And so, oh, in terms of what the motivations are. So the motivations, anytime there's going to be distress, right? It's not going to be one specific, like if it's a divorce or something like that, it just has to be some level of motivation, right? Because I mean, the four pillars, right? Timeline, condition, price, motivation. Without motivation, it just goes on my follow-up list and I'll keep reaching out to them until that motivation rises because otherwise it's just fit for retail. There has to be some inherent time thing. So as long as the motivation is not something like, you know, just looking around, looking for offers, you know, looking to upsize, downsize, that isn't a motivating factor. It's something that is a more stressful situation. Those people are going to be much more susceptible to wholesale deals. Otherwise, there are some people who are super, super great at getting listing referrals in. The route that they like to go down is, hey, you know what? I'm just going to send my partner out there and we can get a better look at the property, see what our cash offer comes in at. And then they just send their realtor friend in who comes and convinces them out of, out of a cash offer. Um, but otherwise, that those are going to be the motivation factors that uh, sell more. Liam, we ready to rock and roll? I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm going to dip it a little bit. Perfect. Well. All right, guys. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, it just changed. I don't know. A bunch of people must have just changed their votes all of a sudden. I don't know what happened. It was, like, off by one. And now it's off by, like, 11. Okay. Well, anyways, guys, here we are. Out of 85 total votes, the difference in votes is 48 to 37. The winner of tonight's closers cage match is Nick Luivano with 56.47% of the votes. Wow. <laughs> I will say this. I will say this. It was a hell of a match. Because RJ's, RJ's good. RJ's good. It was a hell of a I match. Think, I mean, I've just got to say it was tough, no doubt. It was tough, no doubt. He didn't get as many people on the phone as we would have liked to see tonight. Can I call you a Uh, No, but I, I listen, I my thing is, is clearly the people enjoyed what Nick brought to the table, and that's why I wanted to bring him on the show, um, you know, because he, he provided a ton of value, and you saw it on every single one of his calls. Absolutely. People were jumping in the comments and saying, hey, that's something, that was a gym, that was fire. Um, so I, I don't, I, I kind of agree with the decision from the aspect of, I, I did get a lay down contract, um, and, and that was it. And Nick talked to probably, you know, five or six different sellers and I thought they were all good quality conversations. So, uh, I, I do kind of agree with the, the decision tonight. I would say this, um, uh, some thoughts as, as far as I did definitely talk to, to more sellers, um, and I think that uh, that I think that that number one was was definitely like because you get to hear my my uh, like pitch I guess you can say a little more yeah. than RJ's. Um, and I think that another thing is that um, 
I think I know for a fact people got a bunch of value. Like I was when I talked about about me learning something. I think you said something, RJ, about reading my kids or something like that. Like I'm gonna yep. use that. And I don't have kids, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm right. still gonna use that because it just makes it so relatable. Right. And I think with that, if I were on the other side of the phone and I were to hear that, then it makes that's like him saying, like, look, I'm not gonna, I gotta make money too. I'm not in, right. I'm not in this, I'm in business for profit, right? So with all due respect, like that's why I'm going to be at this particular price because there has to be some type of profit on my end as well. So I'm going to start using that. Uh, hopefully, I don't get in trouble because I don't have kids. I love it. I love it. Well, congratulations, Nick. Congratulations. Was, to yeah, you. Did you? What place did you come in in 2020 Closer Olympics? I got knocked out in the second round by uh, Carlos and his uh, and his brother-in-law. And then, and then you're, and then you're number one in the. And how many people did you go through in 2021? So there was an open run where they had, I think there was a total of what, Liam, 16 people that competed. I think so. I think you're right. So they did it different this year, Nick. That we didn't go head to head. It was everyone did the first day, and then the top three went to the finals. So I was in second place after day one, uh, due to some questionable mathematics by Chris Jefferson. But uh, I, I give him a hard time because he's my buddy. And then, uh, and then the, the finals, it was it was pretty much no contest. Mm -hmm. Max Jimenez and Munif didn't really have good rounds, and so I got a signed contract live, and it was over. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna say. I also wanted to say this. I think RJ, you had touched upon it as well. There are not many people that are willing to go on live where yeah. anything can happen and close these live on Instagram Live, or on uh, YouTube Live, whatever it may be. The real players in the in the space, you know, will accept the invitation, come on live and put all the skills that, that, that they have and that they teach and that they preach on display for the world um, to see. And RJ does it way more than even I do. You know, he does it, you know, probably once or, you know, once a week live on Instagram, you know? Yeah. Um, that's why I accepted this right away because I know that, you know, the, you know, I practice what I preach. And so not many people are willing to do this so that's why I got to give uh, applause to RJ because he's the one, number one, hosting these things, these bad boys. And number two, putting his skills on display all day long. So um, realistically, a real deal, RJ Bates, the show. Love it, man. It's fun, too. Well, let yeah, me guys, uh, before we end it, Nick, you are now the uh, the title holder. We're going to have to change that championship golden, golden C over to your side. <laughs> but now, as is customary, you need to call somebody out either rematch with RJ or somebody else in the space, as you say, somebody who can put their, uh, you know, put their medal to the test, somebody who practices what they preach. Do you have somebody in mind that you think you would uh, like to face head to head going forward? Ah, uh, let me think here. Someone that I'd like to essentially call out. Um, so he was actually, a, this is, this is, he's a good, he's a good buddy of mine as well. It's all love. But he was actually a judge in the, uh, last closers closers olympics and then he was a contestant in the first closers olympics and i love this guy he's a great guy he's big on the internet as well um but i would call out and maybe, maybe bring him out of retirement because he went from contestant to judge um on the last closers closers olympics and everybody knows who's who this guy is but i would call out uh mr steve trang uh, to come on and put his skills on display come out of retirement um, you know, I take a day off of interviewing successful real estate investors and put the skills back on display because he advanced and I didn't advance in 2020. So I want him to come out of retirement. Steve Trang, this is Nick Levano Flip King calling you out. Let's go. Boom. There you go. Well, there it is right there, guys. I think that is a perfect note to leave it on. We're going to clip that. We're going to send it all over social media. We're going to make sure that that gets in the eyes of Steve. But other than that, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. We averaged well over 100 people tonight. That is crazy. It's mind-blowing. So much value being spread out to the masses. So make sure you guys subscribe to RJ's channel. Subscribe to the Speed to Lead channel. We're going to be doing many more of these events in the future. Make sure that you give a follow to both RJ, uh, Nick, myself, and that you guys can tune in for more. We always want to try to provide value. And, of course, we'll be back very soon. Talk to you guys soon. God bless. It was fun. See you, hey, guys. Bye. Are you looking to implement pay-per-click advertising into your real estate business? iSpeedTheLead.com is an a la carte PPC marketplace, allowing investors to get into the world of PPC on a budget. 